I yeah. had a lot of one night stands where I felt shame and guilt, but I just wasn't orgasming. So it's like I wasn't. Oh, you're like, am I really yeah. guilty? Yeah, yeah. yeah, now that I orgasm, I'm like, well, that was great. <laughs> it was Once you came, you're like, a, oh, this is all worth it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me those balls. Let me lick all of them. <laughs> Bring them over. Man School 202. This is Harry Turjanian, and uh, this week we're doing something just a little bit different. Uh, we're giving you a taste of what we do over at Patreon. Uh, Patreon is every week we uh, Patreon is where we do all our bonus content every week. Uh, we do at least one listener mail show, uh, sometimes a bonus show, sometimes a bonus special, and it, it's a lot of fun. And if you uh, want to help support the show, if we've ever done anything that you've enjoyed, whether it's entertainment, uh, whether it's information, advice, whether we've improved your life or relationships, we really appreciate the support. If you went over to Patreon.com/slash/Manschool202 to to sign up and it helps keep the show going. It helps uh, keep us going. So hopefully uh, this collection today of uh, listener mail episodes that we uh, have on Patreon will kind of encourage you to do that. Um, and another way you can support us if you're a fan of the show, we also do relationship consultations. So you can uh, find my relationship consultations. You can hit me up via email uh, for rates uh, and you can hit me up at uh, advicefromharry at gmail.com. Uh, you can, for Dante's consultations, you can get his rates and go to uh, DanteNero.com slash consult. Or, and if you want to support the show in another way, just tell a friend, share the show, like, subscribe on social media, TikTok, YouTube, the whole thing. Uh, we really appreciate it. And, and uh, hopefully you will enjoy this collection of uh, listener mail where we answer your questions. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't. Yo, what's up, Patreon? We are back again, kicking it live. Um, this That's is right. Y'all are the family inside the family. So um, we're going to do some listener mail, got some questions in. Keep in mind, anybody who's on this Patreon, feel free if to send in the questions. I want to answer them. Anything that I can dispel, any I appreciate you guys supporting us on the patreon i can't yeah. thank you enough um and i want to give you back value for the fact that you're supporting us we're doing this together this is a movement and and i want y'all to be a part of the movement so anything that you want to see or you want to hear or any questions that you have man i'd love to answer it and and, and make give you clarity so we all can be in a better place um harry we gotta listen to mail let's do it yeah well speaking of patreon so this person sent one in and i answered this but i wanted to address this to the patreon people because it came up they had left in a comment my girl got embarrassed queefing and when i tried to explain how it's natural she legit told me to stop mansplaining her body what the fuck do you even say back and so my thought to that, and you tell me what you think after that, Dante. Uh, my thing was, I, I, the quick answer is that you don't engage in an argument. You just move on and leave. Because to me, that's an overreaction on her part. Yeah. If that's First of all, that's not what mansplaining is. Mansplaining, no. there is, that does exist. I get that sometimes women are talked down to by men who don't think, especially more in a workplace scenario. Right, right, right. In particular. But that's not what mansplaining is. That's a moment where he thought to say, hey, if you feel uncomfortable about this, just so just just so you know, you don't have to. Everything is OK. That's a kind gesture. And if she took that as an opportunity to dig the boots into you, yeah. that's a red flag that's indicative of a lot more things, a, yeah. a lot more problems ahead, because that's a kind gesture. If she finds the negativity in that, there's no value in her at all. If that's how she views with all the shit that women actually deal with. Yeah, that she's going to view that. And it's just it's just that's not crossing the line. I mean, so what I told him also was, look, it's natural to ask yourself, hey, did I cross the line? You know, we talk about reasonable, firm and fair. Right. Right. And so RFF is RFF. the acronym. Yeah, that's a way. That's something that I created years ago, that acronym in order to test to see if you're you know, a lot of times it's we, a self-diagnosis really yes, is what it is. Yeah, yeah that's it's a good when way you ask it. yourself like. What happened here? Is this person being reasonable? Like, is it a reasonable response? You got to ask yourself that, right? right? You know, and if not, you got to whatever. It, is it a reasonable response from her? I don't think it is a reasonable response no. from her. No, no. Right. Is, like, it, is it reasonable? I mean, you can use that in, a, in a, like, is it reasonable to 
is it a reasonable response? Is it uh, fair for her to assume? So here's uh, the first thing that struck me was re read it again. The first part of okay. it. Okay. My girl got embarrassed. Queefing. Stop right there. My girl. Right. This is this is somebody who you intimately yeah. have a connection with. Not some this, rando. This is not something you just yeah. smash and dash. Nothing like that. This is somebody who you're you're claiming as your girl. And so if she doesn't understand, if 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 her her diagnosis of this is that somehow you are belittling her or making her feel uncomfortable, the second sentence is, "My girl, what is it? Read it again." My girl got embarrassed queefing, and when I tried to explain how it's natural, she legit told me to stop mansplaining her body. So here's here's what's interesting. My girl got embarrassed. Who got embarrassed? Did he get embarrassed? No. Nope. Was he t was he upset about it? No. no. She showed visible signs of being embarrassed about something that happened. His response was to console her or to 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 make her feel that comfortable about something that was a basic bodily function and her response to that was you don't tell me what the fuck I like like basically that's what she's saying by man you don't you don't have a right to fuck you first of all stop farting out your pussy you mm, that's, bum bitch yeah that's the first thing <laughs> you should establish right off the top <laughs> Number one, before we get to anything else, you hey, need to bitch, stop pussy farting. Stop, stop pussy farting, bitch. So suck, do something, you goofy bitch. But yeah. Your pussy's too big. That's first, why it's sucking up air. How about that? No. Before the we get to other matters, first on the agenda is that you stop pussy fucking, farting. You filthy whore. So <laughs> the point is that's not what his response was. His response was ba was 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 predicated upon the fact of her embarrassment. If she had queefed and giggled about it and left it alone, would he, would he have even responded in any way, in any shape or form? Probably not. You would have just so so. Here's a guy who who literally felt as though he was he was comforting her, and what was he met with in terms of him comforting her filthy air filled twat? Right, <laughs> was something is wrong with you. You're exactly right, Harry. This is indicative of somebody who is looking for problems. This is a toxic person who's trying to make it about something else. Now, what's interesting, too, if she was embarrassed and then she even if she was embarrassed and then she took the embarrassments to deflect her embarrassment to put it on you that somehow you're a dirtbag, you go. I, I, the explanation of that is just listen. That's not a good look either. Yeah, I don't. I, I, first of all, I don't care. The only reason why your pussy's queefing is because I've been pumping that motherfucker up with mm. <laughs> full of air. I've been pumping it up like a it's track gotta tire, bitch. It's got to be compressed bitch. air. That's it. And who you think pumped it up, bitch? Me. Um, I'm the one so, who put that air there. That air in there. <laughs> That's it, that I mean, dick. I didn't even check. I didn't even check the PSIs on it. I just pumped it up. You're lucky I didn't blow your pussy up. Yeah. So, <laughs> the point is that this is her response to an insecure situation, and the fact that she's taking out on you is is the crux of the matter. Um, that this is somebody who basically doesn't take responsibility for what they are, what they do. Secondly, that they, in the context of their their embarrassment, they'd rather take it out on you than than to just be and and as a guy, we don't even give a fuck. Like it's not even something we're concerned about. And so, and look, if she has you know because it becomes a feminist issue or whatever, she has the right to feel however she wants to feel. You have a right to decide if that's okay with you. If yeah. that type of energy is okay with you, if that's necessary. And personally, for me, it's not, you know, why would why would I want that to take an opportunity it, of somebody being very intimate and caring and compassionate and then take that and turn it around and make it a and make it a, a an attack, a, a, an, ass an assault on you. Yeah. And it's like yeah, and your that's, integrity that's... and your intention. I mean, it's just beyond a mistake. It's just it's classifying that what you're doing is intentional. 
That's worse than leaving your cabinets open. Oh, my goodness. Not you can't leave your cabinets <laughs> open. We've, we've learned this, that you cannot leave your cabinets open. Don't leave your cabinets open. Kick them off. <laughs> kick those cabinets Karate off. Karate kicking them what off. What else we got, player? Um, we got, let's see this wait, one. Wait, wait, wait. What was the end of that? Give me the end of the fo the whole end of that, because that's what struck me as the beginning. The first, uh, my what girl. What the fuck do you even, uh, man, she told me legit to stop mansplaining her body, which is not what he was doing. And then, uh, what the fuck do you even say back? And so I, I wanted to write just buy is what you say. Goodbye. You say buy. Well, I mean, if he's a, you go listen, my, I think what to just explain what the point, my intention, you were embarrassed about this, and my intention was to make you feel comfortable about it. And if I can't do that without you making ridiculous accusations, we could we could end this yesterday. Mm. Like you, you got to understand a guy who's who's doing that, who is even link, thinking about this in the context of making her feel better. Is that here's a guy who wants you to be okay, wants you to feel comfortable. And if somebody is meeting your ability or your desire to make her feel comfortable about something that she's embarrassed about and her response is to attack you, that says volumes about who she is as a person. That means that this is somebody who's not willing to take responsibility for their own shit. And that is only gonna that's only gonna that's like a chick who goes through your goes through your iPhone and says, Well, you left it open. You know, it's it's the same kind of thing. It's, she, it's, you know, and she might have issues with other people or issues with, with having dealt with harassment and what have you, but that's not the proper way to deal with it. And to attack somebody who had nothing to do with it is not the proper way to address and, it. And that that brings a good point to I think what, what what I think you have to take into consideration also is there are there are situations where people um, have certain issues, and as her boyfriend or her man or the rock that she can lean on, your job is to to be supportive so that she can lean on you in, in kind of expressing things and, and to sort them out. That doesn't mean that she gets to use you as an emotional punching bag. She doesn't get to be because this is this is I used to say this. I mean, I, we haven't talked about this in a while, but you, 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 you get somebody who doesn't like something there's a misunderstanding and then she wants to be abusive or she's had a bad day at work or, you know, maybe somebody passed away or the grandmother's sick or something and they come home and they want to use you as this emotional punching bag. And I used to say this all the time, even if. Even if you would allow it, if it, even if, if it made if it them worked. feel better, if it I worked, might, I might, I might, yeah, I might allow it if it made you feel better. But after you shit on me, I don't feel better. You don't. It's not like you you shit on me and tell me don't mansplain, and then now I feel better about my embarrassment about the queef and my embarrassment about this. Not only that, but now I feel horrible. Mm -hmm. You feel horrible. You don't feel any better about the situation, and I've allowed you. To, to, to fuck everything up. And I say a man has to be strong enough to to protect his woman from herself. You have to protect your relationship from her emotions. And you have to protect you from her emotions. And if you give her a free-for-all to just say and do this is the same thing like you, you get women who will have dreams about you cheating on them and then they're mad at you. Because they had a dream in their subconscious about you fucking somebody else, and then all of a sudden it's your problem. Don't don't tolerate it. It all, always keep this in mind. It never gets better. It only gets worse. Mm. Okay, so on to the next question here. Let's see the one you sent me. Uh, let me pull that up. Bear with me here. Okay, let's see. I got a question. Uh, it would be dope if you could answer it. Question is, you always say, put your happiness first. I very often find myself miserable thinking about fucking other women, though I'm in a relationship with a woman I love. The chick I'm with is awesome, but a little asexual, like she doesn't prioritize fucking at all, nor does she need it. Should I step out and get what I need to be happy? Love you guys. Mucho. Okay. Okay, so this is a this is a 
there's no answer to this, but there is a a a, a course, you know, sort of like a flow chart where this where you have to ask yourself these questions. Is this sex, the sex at the level that it is, is it non-negotiable? Is she so asexual that she doesn't want sex that it's 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 unmanageable, non-negotiable? Do you need sex? Is sex important to you in a way that it's it's non-negotiable? That the things that you get from her um is uh, is is enough to keep you uh monogamous um you gotta ask ask that quench question first if it's if it, now, now the first thing you do the first the next phase of that is if it's not what is the compromise that she's willing to make to get that closer to where the comp where it's not non-negotiable where if it if if where you're at is non-negotiable then the question is what what's the compromise that you can make between them how much sex how many times how is it that has you have to figure that out first then that has to be presented that this is my bottom line with this i love being with you and i love doing this da, 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 da. but can you meet me at this place if you can't meet her at this place and you're and it's non-negotiable then you go and you say it's there will either be a compromise in this or I will get it someplace else. I've I've had this. I've had my uh, Harry knows this. My wife wasn't, you know, after the baby was born, she was like, didn't want to want to give no head, whatever. And I was like, yo, what's up? And she said, well, I figured you would just get that taken care of. And I was like, you got Fair it. enough. Bingo, <laughs> you got bingo. It. No problem. Pa bang, bang, bang. Yeah. You get. You shot a lot of finger guns. You got it. Yeah, that was a lot of finger guns because the minute she said that, all right, it was calls Fair made, enough. and my needs were met. But I, I, I don't think that she should lie about it, and I don't think that she should sneak behind uh, people's people's back. I was, I other episode, I was talking about the ultimatums. The, the, the Netflix thing. And what's interesting is when you're willing to say, yo, I'm done, you'll be surprised what uh, what how quickly people will make compromises. And if they don't, well, aren't willing to make compromises, they don't give a fuck about you. If somebody's not willing to, to compromise in order to keep you when you're talking about non-negotiables, then that's the person you need to not be with. The other thing is, if 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 you are at, if you are an opposite ends of of the you know the opposite spectrum of the negotiating uh, teeter totter. If, if you can't meet uh, as far as negotiating, yeah. You you gotta you gotta move on. I would gotta, say this as far as going, you know, should you go out cheat on her and all this? I don't recommend that because it's just not it's going to create a lot more stress when ultimately what you're doing is putting off because you're going to eventually get caught. The reality is you get caught. What happens with that is what happens with that. But even if you're not getting caught, the stress of it, it, it takes a toll on you and it's just unnecessary for something that you need to address anyway. Right. It needs you're gonna to be have addressed. To address it. Yeah. So why, why wait until she catches you and then you fuck everything up. And then when you address it, that is it becomes its whole other problem because now there's nothing you can do to be in the right in that situation because, right, because you cheated no matter on how it. no matter how wrong she was no matter how neglectful no matter how selfish she was it now it becomes about you not maintaining your own personal credibility your own personal truth and and I hate to you I hate to oversimplify this but if you're authentic credible and empathetic um it, it, you 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 can't lose. You can't lose. You can't lose. I mean, even, even if, if you gonna... lose, you win, really. Because you, let's you say let's say you bring this up to her, and she goes, "Well, I don't I don't want to do that. That's not for me. I don't want to have that level of sex." And you go, "Well, maybe we shouldn't see each other." Okay, maybe we shouldn't. Then you move on, and you find somebody who does fulfill those needs. Because the longer this goes, even it will affect your relationship. Because if you're unsatisfied, that affects how you feel towards that person. 
that's part of it. If you feel unfulfilled, especially when it comes to sexually, yeah. you are going to resent that person to some degree. Yeah. And what the positives that you have that are yeah. non-sexual, those will wither away a little bit as well because yeah. there's there's a disconnect there. But um, yeah, on top of that, it, it's just you don't want to cheat because it's just it's you, you. All right. How about this? Look at this. You see what everyone else is doing? We're showing you something different. What would everyone else do, which is either cheat or stay in the marriage? Right. We're giving you the option three that nobody uses it. Yeah. Deal with this shit right in here, right now. Go listen. This thing has to be. I want to take care of this. Oh, what's going on? You discuss it. You discuss it nicely, politely. You say, hey, this is something that is a need of mine. I want you to be comfortable, but if you're not comfortable, let me know. Whatever. You address it right here, right now. Nobody does that, but we tell you to do that. We do that because it cuts right to the chase. And guess what's going to happen? One of two things. Either she's going to change how she approaches this and you're going to get your needs met, or she's going to tell you she doesn't want to do that or she's not going to fulfill, and then you're going to be out of that relationship and in a different relationship where That's those needs be are better. fulfilled. Exactly. And you're going to be happier in the long run. Your happiness has to be important. Even at the even at the cost of losing the relationship, because otherwise, you, like you said, Harry, the, the resentment will be there. And I, man, dog, I, I really, uh, even with you, man, I I realize you being able to pick that apart, and uh, yeah, and 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 just to see what the ultimate, what the ultimate end in all of that. I mean, yeah, we want it's you just to cutting avoid to the, the end. end. Yeah. And like unfortunately, were, it involves, look, it involves going through tough territory. It does. It's not easy to have that conversation, number one. what's more tough than not getting your dick sucked when you right. want to be in a relationship where you resent somebody, you love them, but you don't, whatever, and you got to rip that Band-Aid off to find out where it's at. And, and a lot of times, you know, you'd be surprised how much stuff is exposed simply because, simply because you talked about it. Um good bad or otherwise i mean but it's never i i don't think it's ever bad like you don't lose we used to say even back when patrice was around we used to talk about be ready to take the l but it's really not an l it's you relieving yourself from a relationship that you're not happy with in the first place right now the um, tricky part is i'll say that he's saying he is happy with everything except that right he really loves his girl the problem is that is going to wither away with that. That is especially it's a primal need. It's an urgent need. And it would work in reverse, too, because of what if a yeah. woman's not satisfied in all capacities, she also starts to wither she away dump you her too. feelings wither away and she will well, she gonna go give, get it somewhere else. Yeah. You know, I mean, more than likely she'll get it somewhere else. She's not going to have this conversation with you. You know, But it's better It'll... to talk about it. Try to work on it together. Yeah. You know, but talking about it just straight out talking about it is the best way to deal with it. Uncomfortable or not, because now you can go, well, we're either going to fix this or we're not going to do this. And then you figure it out within the end of the year. You time, know, time is a commodity. Yeah. Dude. And to stay in relationships where you're unhappy, um, where you haven't talked about the con in the context of being happy is a mistake on so many levels. Um, because it doesn't go away. It's not going to get better. It's only going to get worse. And in order for you to get to the other side, sometimes you got to walk through the fire. And what and what about this? You know, even if this comes up, let's say and this is, you know, whatever it could happen. If you, I'm just theorizing here. You talk to her about it. and You go, listen, I'm fulfilled in every way except sexually. I love you. I care about you. if she's truly asexual, then you go. Well, I, I don't know where I'm going to get these needs met then. So either we stay together, either we break up or we stay together and I do stuff outside of us sexually. Who's to say she doesn't say yeah to that? Yeah. Maybe yeah. she does, because if you're if she's like, geez, I, I'm really am in love with you. I just don't care sexually. If she truly is asexual. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe she will be OK with that. You know, yeah, it's but, a funny thing. You, uh, you, yeah, yeah. The, I think to understand this, I, I, because I think people see this as nuanced. But here, sure. here's the thing. If you got a girl, you, you're dating some girl, and she's a lesbian, she don't want no dick. Right. And she yeah. tells you she's a lesbian, but you got a great friendship, you're together. You, 
you can't give her something that she wants because she wants something else. I think because of the fact that she is heterosexual and there's, you know, she might dabble in these a little bit or have a little bit of sex. It doesn't matter to her. But the bottom line is she wants something else. If she wants an asexual relationship with something, somebody and that's not what you're okay with, it, you have to go, my happiness is more important than, than this. This is not fulfilling. This is non-negotiable. I am not willing to compromise this, or at least I'm willing to compromise it up to this point. This is where maybe I want to fuck twice a day. Maybe we go four times a week or something. There has to be a moderation. But but honestly, if you're really negotiating that and somebody's, you're telling somebody you're dissatisfied by the way it is, and they don't make the effort, even if we're talking about the negotiation four times a week, three times, what you're going to have is you have somebody fucking you who doesn't want to fuck you. And you don't want that either. Who wants that? Who wants that? Nobody wants that. So you got to speak up about it. You got to speak about what, what your needs are. And uh, if you don't, the, the, the relationship is already over, Yeah. unfortunately. But it also frees up time and energy so that you can find what you want. So, so I wanted to explain something that I haven't explained in a long uh, a dating technique. Time travel. Oh, yeah, the time travel technique. Yeah, I forgot about time travel. It's great. So time travel is a technique that, that uh, we've talked about on the show for many, for many years about how to get a girl on a first date comfortable enough to sleep with you on the first date and the way this works is that so the 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 whole concept came from an idea where you know women will say i don't uh i don't fuck on the first date um i don't i, I don't kiss so i don't fuck or i don't whatever on the third date it takes the third date or whatever whatever what time travel as a technique does is it 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 escalates the, the woman's level of comfort so that she feels more comfortable to you, with you, okay. so that she wants to have a... Now, do you explain the literal aspect of time traveling is what you do is when you're on a date, instead of making it a long, let's say a long dinner, one dinner at a restaurant, right? you go to multiple locations, right? a lot more locations, up like four locations, right? And what that does, usually it feels like four separate dates. Right. Because you're moving from place to place and the energy changes, so it feels like it's more dates. Is that an accurate assessment of what? That's an accurate yeah. assessment. The, the, the nuance of it is that this. So first of all, if you have your own place, the best way to start it is to have the girl meet you at your house. So you don't you can you can omit this part or you can omit different parts. I think for some it. guys that's a little tricky, especially if you don't know the girl because you don't want her oh, fair want her to feel comfortable. Fair enough. But what I would, what I would, but if, if, maybe this is somebody who you who you know, but you never at you knew her yeah, on like a personal a level. So I don't want to, I don't okay, want to omit enough, yeah. this. Um, but it doesn't have to be used. E this portion doesn't have. Doesn't have to be. But if you best can, case that's scenario, even better. Yeah. I have a relationship with this woman, just not a romantic relationship. I go, hey, I'd like to take you out, such and such and such. I got to um, if you can get her to meet at your meet at your place. Think about what her what her constitution is when she meets at your place. She's apprehensive. She maybe doesn't want to come to your house. She she's worried about whether or not she's gonna there's gonna be a sexual situation. She comes to your house, and there's portions of this that you can use. She comes to your house. You're not quite ready, on purpose, right? Mm -hmm. You go listen. I'm running a little late. Um, if you want this beer or soda in the refrigerator, just get what you want. The cups are in the cabinet. What this stuff and the place is well lit. So her first initial thing is, I don't know if I want to go to this size house because um, she had the apprehension of, of having to deal with a sexual uh, Advance, advances. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So she comes to your house. Your house is all lit. She's in your home. Um, you go, listen, whatever you want, this soda, beer, soda, this such and such and such, whatever in the fridge, get whatever you want, this water, whatever. You're getting ready. She comes in your house, she's in your house, she's mingling in your house. The reason why you're doing this is not to get her in your house, but to, the reason is to get her comfortable with being in your home. 
So imagine you get a girl and you're on a date and then you go, you want to go home. This is the first time she's in your home. There's a, le- a certain level of, of, of comfort that she wants. That Anytime she to- you're in any new place, yeah. your, your mind is thinking about different things, processing where you are, locations for safety reasons or even not safety reasons. Even if you're just thinking about like it's like, new, it, new and encountering, awkward. Yeah, your new encounter. Yeah. The fact that you take her to your place initially with no, and then as soon as she, you give her a little time in the house so she sees your place, she's comfortable. Now the, the groundwork is set. You go to the first place. I always say when you somebody's come to the, to, to to you know when you first meet them for the day, hey, how you doing? You give them a hug. Good to meet you. Blah 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 blah. What you're doing also is you're 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 making it clear that you are a touchy person hey how are you hug kiss on the cheek i'll be right back i'm getting ready such and such now she gets familiar with your home you get dressed you go you ready to go yes you turn off the lights you leave you go to the first venue so maybe you go for drinks uh, a couple of drinks at a bar usually a place that you're familiar with the people are there are familiar with you walk in hey how you doing Dante, what's going? Hey, what's up? Blah, 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 blah. We get a drink. We get a drink. Boom, 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 boom. We stay there. Now, when, as the night goes on, every, every venue that we go to is the, the sexual touch, or I should say touch becomes more sexual with each, yeah. with each. That doesn't mean like a grab on the, the no, set. It you means start with a hug a and a kiss on the cheek. A non-platonic sort of you know touching like just or very 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 uh, unaggressive so maybe right. you sit at the bar you uh you, you get a drink you pull her close to you so you maybe your thigh is next to hers while you're talking to her you touch her not physically maybe even with the back of the hand so i was talking to so and so you you're doing this kind of I was talking to so and so, hand on the shoulder. What what you're ultimately doing is you're making it more comfortable. She's getting more comfortable with your touch. Here's a basic fundamental what I talk about. If you're a straight dude and a gay dude starts jerking you off, eventually you will come because there's a physical mm. there's a physical action that's happening. My point is the more comfortable you get with this woman, even if you're not a gay dude, at some point in time, there is friction and whatever the fuck it is. It goes beyond that. So the more you touch her, the more... There's a biological function. Right, there's a biological whether function. Whether or not you're into it. Whether, whether or not you're not into Eventually, it, yeah. there's a, you, being touched is being touched. You go to the... You're having drinks, you're talking, whatever, whatever, whatever. You go, maybe you go to dinner. You go to dinner. When you go to the dinner, you don't ever you sit. You don't sit across from her. You sit next to her, because then you can put your hip right next to hers, and you can. I'd rather sit next to you. If she if she's if she bucks about it or whether you can. But you what you what you ultimately want to do is get as much touch so that she's comfortable with you touching her. You eat. You talk. Whatever. You converse. Whatever. Maybe you go to a movie afterwards. Every step of this, you're going to um, increase the touch. You go to, so the first is drinks, second is dinner. Maybe if you're gonna go to a movie, third is the movie, fourth, and maybe you go for a nightcap after a drink or or a drink, or maybe go for dessert at another place. Every place you ice go, ice cream at a different place, ice whatever, cream yeah. at a different place. But what you're doing is. And as you're traveling from mom, from 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 venue to venue, your sexual touch touch gets a, a slightly more aggressive. Yeah. By the end of the night, you should you should be making out with her at least by the third venue. You should have kissed her or something. Or yeah, made don't these I don't yeah because what happens is the other way that usually people do it is they wait until the last. They're very polite and you know whatever, not aggressive, quote unquote very passive and then you try to go in for a kiss at the end of the night which becomes very awkward because you've gone from doing nothing right now doing something very ultimately intimate right because and the even if between... she's comfortable with you yeah. even if she likes you it's still a very big leap 
Right, so the chasm between no touch and something as intimate as a French kiss or a kiss is is a is a large jump. Whereas you've started off by a hug, kiss on the cheek. You're holding hands. There's touch throughout the thing. Maybe there's a kiss on the temple. Maybe you kiss her hand. Maybe the, maybe in the next venue you got your arm around her. Maybe you go for a small peck or whatever else. Doing the third one, you're hugging and you're walking arm in arm and so on and so forth. What's really the killer is the reason why you brought her in your house in the first place, you want to go back to my, my place. When you take her back to your place, the place that you're taking back her back to is a familiar surrounding. Yeah. She's been in your home. She got she got a beer out of your fridge. So because of that, it it, it now I'm not saying that this goes This is not you, done to trick somebody into no. fucking you. The point is it expedites a process between two people who have chemistry and are getting along. Because guess what? If she, if you're not getting along by, you know, stop two, yeah. that's this is not going to continue and you're not going to fix this. But yeah. it's something if you do have chemistry, it's it's making someone feel comfortable enough to engage in something they want to do anyway, but right. they just don't want to feel like a whore the, or a slut about it due to is, social is, is watching you. pressure. Yeah, right. So, so you remove the social pressure because it feels like what I mean, I've done it. You know, the most I've ever done is like five destinations. Five is usually yeah. by the time I've gone to the fifth destination. We're usually making a making you know we're usually making out yeah. in the booth somewhere and swapping spit spit. So I, w I wanted to start to you know I wanted to do that where we start to take real you know on the Patreon where we start teaching real technique, real practical technique. So that's your time travel. Anybody that has any questions you about it, hit hit me back with some questions or whatever. Anything you don't understand, I understand this is kind of a broad stroking uh, overview, but uh, this is what it is. Anyway, yo, Patreon, I love y'all, man. Um, thank you for the support. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Keep supporting us. Tell everybody about the show. Spread the word. We're all one family. We're working on this movement. We want this movement to take flight so that we can help more dudes and just healthier, more happiness and more having your life fulfilled in a way that you really wanted to. Um, thank you so much, everybody. Love y'all, man. Appreciate it. Yo, yo, what's up, y'all? Um, welcome to the Patreon. We are behind the scenes digging in dirty. You know what I'm saying? We outside. <laughs> we outside. Does this continue now? Yeah, yeah. yeah, sorry. yeah continue continue little, we outside. Oh, we outside. Oh, outside is, uh, you know what I mean? Thing, apparently, they shout That's in the, the street. Bing bong. Yes. Uh, Fuck when I your life. Running around the streets, it's... Uh, who was in the house? Now we outside. We, we outside. outside. We are outside. Yeah, it and, was about and people it. scream, "Let's go!" I think we might be going back in the house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Back we, in uh, the day, we used to be in the house. That's right, in the house. house. And now we are, we, outside. we outside. We outside. I do have some listener mail. Yeah, I want to do some listener it. mail to Let's answer some so. question. Yeah, Let's Let's rock and roll. this is all That's from exciting. the Patreon people. Uh, so thank you, of course. Uh, this is, I, I always get weird whether I should mention the names or not. I know it's on Patreon, but do they want to be anonymous? I, I don't know. That's an interesting question. Because they are the fans. I used to own a topless bar when I was a younger man, and I always erred on the side of caution. Like well, yeah, if I saw yeah. somebody in the yeah. mall, no uh, eye contact, yeah. no hello. You talk to me, I'm nice. Otherwise, okay. I... Uh, Must well, have been hard to... Who's where this do I guy? recognize this person from? Maybe I don't approach it. You don't yeah, want to go... Further. Oh, ain't you the guy that got pegged last night? You oh, don't want to do that. Yeah. <laughs> You should never do that. No, you yeah, never no, be. No, no. Seldom is somebody well, going to respond to that now by going, I know. Yeah. <laughs> also, you should leave a party if a guy starts getting pegged. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Get yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that's the difference between. Uh, I I always had this thing about like. But you can't uh, really. That's the difference between. between. No, it, it reminded me of a bit that I that I. It's just the idea <laughs> of like men versus women as far as like the sexuality part. Of, like if you're at a party and a woman gets naked. That is an amazing party, right? If you're at a party and a guy gets naked, that yeah, is the end the of the party. The party's over. <laughs> like, it's over. It's like, over. hey, where's my hat? I got to get out Strangely, not in it, Europe. Yeah. Is Those that somebody guys just get naked and run around. They think it's hysterical. Yeah. Oh, what a party. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. Is that somebody's <laughs> crank? It's a thing out there. Yeah. They're yeah. fucking... Yeah. Well, now now you can't, you can't just, like, when the dude starts getting pegged, you can't got to run out. You got to... You gotta support them. No, you, uh, their you life gotta, choice. You, you gotta kind of just get sleep. Ah, 
Yawn. You pretend. I'm gonna you get can't going to get going, guys. By it. <laughs> no, you can't. Ah, just I gotta get up early oh, in the morning. Man. You know the way I handle it is I say, guys, yeah. it's been great, but this just simply isn't my cup of tea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but Dante's method is you want to pretend like, oh man, if you guys Goodness. had done this an hour earlier, Jesus, yeah. I gotta get up in the morning. I feel like it's oh. a worthwhile spot to place your first boundary. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. You, you know, know what? You, you invited get... me to a knitting party, and now yeah. somebody's being penetrated. That is true. Is it, is it a surprise pegging? And the That's right. What is... type of party is Come this? On. Is it ever really a surprise? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Let's be honest. Well, I have to be honest. If I'm anywhere and somebody starts getting pegged, it's a surprise. I have not agreed to any you don't show get to together. A party. But All right, fair enough. I didn't I mean, say that. I meant mean, I mean for him. It's oh, for the guy getting oh, pegged. Oh, for that guy? <laughs> no. I certainly no. hope it's not a surprise. He's, he's like, secretly known he's his like, whole I, life. I can't wait till Saturday. Uh, yeah. you know, it's marked down on the calendar. It's circled with stars around it. Yeah, yeah. It's not Girls a surprise. tell me about guys. They're like, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, really? Yeah. I. Well, you far me into me. I don't know our, if it's just some so. Our friend so and so, who we can't mention. You can't. You can mention. Rita. Right in the ass? <laughs> Chloe, Chloe's, uh, Chloe, Chloe's my group. Chloe came on here and she talked about you know, yeah, all kinds. I don't remember she talked about getting pegged, nah, though. but remember but, she came in with the Dom chick pegged, yeah. and the other thing. And I don't remember who's who. We was who. a size queen and we were talking she don't fuck with nothing. Yeah, a lot of size queens in here. Dante, it's hard to keep track of. Nah, she was, she which was, ones are the size queens, her, which ones her, like her to do the pegging? Was, her shit was like, I don't fuck with anybody under a nine and a half. Well, nine, that nine. I do remember for Chloe. Yeah. She so we did were like, she didn't want to say, make it right. <laughs> My favorite part about That's... Chloe, Chloe did say, she goes, uh, I mean, I'll, I'll deal with somebody who's like a seven, but they have to do something extraordinary to make up for the inches. <laughs> <laughs> like, to make up for the inches, you fucking greedy wow. bitch. Oh you goodness. cavern. You, you <laughs> to stack make up, up tight. So, 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 so you do remember her saying that, huh? Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> so when he says, <laughs> can up we talk deficit? <laughs> he's going, can we talk about the pet? Yeah, the fuck we can talk about. I don't about. know, man. I don't want to. You know, I so I, I asked her. I Everyone said, has stupid boundaries. Like, I how go, dare uh, you? So you dating them? She goes, no, no. <laughs> This is the funny thing. Even though I got to get her back. She wanted to come back on the show, too. Uh, we'll get her back. Uh, provoca what was it? Kelly Provocateur. Yeah, sure. She stays. She's a porn chick that stays pegging dudes constantly. But then when she. But they all say they would never right. date the guy. Bro, pegging, right? Dudes getting pegged is like jerking off and showing people on the subway. I don't know any dude who says he's doing it. But every so girl much, has a story. Right, right, right. So yeah. I don't know. I, I now granted, I'm not the type of guy that you say, dude, Joey. There's something about me that you get. I'm gonna be like, whoa. Why are you telling yeah, me yeah. this? Yeah. I'm not the. I'm not receptive to your pegging braggadocia. Is what I'm saying. I get it. <laughs> I get it, but I, you know, I've also, I've, I've matured so much. Okay. Yeah, because uh, a year ago, I would have been like, <laughs> <laughs> so, Which does the sound a lot of people make when they get pegged, I, I, I guess, uh, right? I don't know. What do you mean you guessed? <laughs> that was, uh, I think you were doing a little You know, you sometimes click on the wrong video by accident. Uh, I guess. I, I... And then you, you, you <laughs> want to make sure it's the wrong video, so you watch all 17 minutes you know to make sure awful? you didn't make a mistake. I watched... A horse fuck a guy to death. Oh, Jesus. Oh, I feel comfortable that. saying that. Yeah, everybody's saying but that. what's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> it's all relative. Ah. It's all relative. And not mine. All right. I would right. I want to set that myself he, on fire for that instant. The fact that he died is kind of makes it okay. Like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean it makes it okay. It no, it's well, the let's video face it. You don't want to live after I, I, that. Right, That's right, not right. the type of internet or, infamy you want. Or are you yeah. saying, does it make it okay to watch it? Like, hey, I'm not watching for the horse fucking. It's for the Oh, the, no, the no. It's a morbid part. curiosity, yeah, morbid. not a sexual depravity. Yeah. I'm not. Yeah. I mean, I'm fucked up, just not in the way you not would like. like you are fucked up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I didn't even like, realize how that sounded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not for the. Not I mean, the, hey, peg it for the, no, for the, no I, I'm an animal lover. I watch a guy get killed. Hey, you know, there ain't nothing wrong with me. Uh. Don't, don't, be, don't be letting horses fuck you. <laughs> I'm, that's the great thing about this show. We we tackle the hard topics. <laughs> yes. You're not going to see th this on well, fucking that, that's Nightline. A, right? well, you know what? I wish we had phone lines to open it up. Would you rather be fucked to death by a horse or be pegged and have it on the internet? Oh, See, geez. now I personally, I'm going down with the ship. You want to go to the horse? Yeah, I, I, 
I've suffered enough as you Joey are, Day. I don't want to be. <laughs> you know, I've I've had all that bullshit already. Yeah. I'm not. You Pegging wanna, is one step too far. You want a Viking funeral. That, I hear you. Yeah, I, I do. Burn whatever's left of my body after that. Yeah, it's... Uh, I one time did a show in uh, fucking... This is not about a horse getting... It, oh, a it's, a, uh, it's, it's about a, a dude fucking a horse. Okay. Uh, well, I mean, well, now carry we on. it's not like we're savages. Yeah. I, I now have the floor. The <laughs> <laughs> uh, floor is yours. Mar I, I was at Martha's Vineyard. Yeah, I, or the Cape senator Cod. from Freak has the floor. <laughs> I went to do a show one of the two places, Martha's Vineyard. Or, oh, I think it was Martha's Vineyard, right? So I go there yeah. and I do this thing. We're staying in the band house. It's like a, a one night gig. I'm sleeping in the band house. I'm there eight hours early and I go in and I get the daytime bartender and I'm, I buy a Coke and I talk to them for 10 minutes. And at some point I say, Hey, is there anything I should know about that's unique right here that would make everybody die laughing? You know, like just totally open-ended and they sometimes will to give perform when you go on stage. Like, what is the local right, thing? That, the, that right. I'm just there yeah, getting yeah. some sort yeah. of shit. That's going to annoy the comics later that I know. And they, they don't. Do. Yeah. But in this instance, she's like, no, I can't think. Well, there is the guy who got caught fucking his horse again. And I'm like, oh, that's it. Yeah, that's it. Um, I love you for a second. Tell the story. I'm not sure if this is juicy enough. I don't right. know if you're going to, I don't know if this is useful at all. <laughs> but I mean, one I'm time a guy to hear you out. Again, again, was this. <laughs> Wait, what? Again, was. So. And Joey almost had a second heart attack when he said that. Third. Like it would 30. be my third, yeah. Did this Joey fucking got an erection guy... from the, how good the jokes were going to be to open up that and show. And it was. Yeah. It crushed. But yeah. he pled when the they said guilty or not guilty. He said, don't knock it till you try. <laughs> <laughs> Joey, I want to hear the joke so bad. Bro, I what just, if you just got on stage yo, and said, hey, so yo, what's up with fucking... Yeah, I waited for the last moment on stage. I was like, I want to dedicate my show. <laughs> <laughs> the last moment to the guy. Hey, and then, you know, once great. I got that big pop, I was like, hey, don't knock it till you try. <laughs> wow, that was it. Good night. <sighs> fucking walked off. Yo, I, that is a great road story. I'll try to tell it quick, but this is worth Go telling. Go for it, man, yeah. Okay. This hardly seems like the time or the place, <laughs> Bro, Joey. Yeah, <laughs> a podcast. A podcast. I've see. gone too. You far. go on with your silly stories and <laughs> a music, a music anecdotes, <laughs> wasting so, our comedy time. I get off stage. The bartender is hot. Uh, she's like, "Hey, hang out with me. Let me show you the island." Absolutely. I've heard that before. Yeah. Yes. Hooray! <laughs> dun, da, da. So I'm like, "Yeah, definitely. She's hot. We hit it off." Um, She's got a Jeep. She drives me to a couple of different bars on the island. She's telling me this shit, right? She's like, hey, do you want to go smoke? I'm like, yes, I would love to smoke. I don't have any weed with me. I'm not. We drive, right, to this beach house on yeah. Martha's Vineyard that looks like a polo catalog. It looks mm. like uh, just that perfect beach aesthetic, white with like ropes and little nautical yeah. touches and light woods. It's just fucking beautiful. A gorgeous house. Nice we birch. Go in. Nice birch. Wood. Nice birch. <laughs> if if Sergio was here, he'd be like, what type of wood is that? Oak? <laughs> 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 fucking beautiful house. We go in. It's all these like good looking, privileged white people smoking weed. Mm. Like a dozen of them. And right. they're like, hey, it's the comedian. <laughs> it's that uh, three to four hour honeymoon period yeah, after yeah. a show where people. You're the best thing oh, they've ever my, seen. This is, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. It's, by eight o'clock in the morning, you just another schmuck. You're like, oh, it's the guy. Yeah. But at, I'm the in that honeymoon. Still, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we start smoking and shit. And uh, dude, the fucking. Uh, she says, I'm too fucked up. I can't get us out of here. So I'm like, I could drive. She's like, you can't drive. We're going on these back roads. She goes, the lady who owned the house said, well, Bill will give you a ride. She's like, all right, great. Bill will give you a ride. So now I'm stoned. A police car pulls up. <laughs> That's our fucking ride. Bill <laughs> is the on-duty sergeant on the island, right? Yeah. And uh, he's, so now... <clears throat> I'm, nobody has said, hey, Bill's cool. Uh -huh. Nobody said, you don't know, I not, don't and know Bill. Bill don't know me. <laughs> no. So I'm he's, not going for this one again. <laughs> I So I go with her, right? He, she, uh, 
We get in the car. She goes, I forgot something. Hold on. So now she leaves. I'm in the back seat <laughs> of the car, right? And uh, I'm with Bill, and Bill's a cop. And he said, so, did you have fun smoking marijuana tonight? <laughs> so I look at him. He's looking at me in the rearview mirror, and I go, yeah, I did. He goes, oh, uh, yeah? Do you have any marijuana on you now? <laughs> I go, yeah, I do. And he kind of, I see him give me a hard ass stare for a second then he smiles like I passed the test <laughs> like and I'm just shit I'm sitting in the back of the fucking cop car shitting my pants so he's like uh, how is it back there I was like ah, you can move the seat up but you know that you motherfuckers do this on purpose <laughs> and he laughs she gets in the fucking cop drives me to drops me off at her house right uh -huh. she goes in he gives me the long handshake you know it's a weird thing guys will get this he wants to fuck her, and he has wanted to fuck oh, her forever. Oh, it's yeah. his wife's friend, and he's like, hey, he's trying to give yeah, me that yeah, little yeah, extra. Like, oh. yeah, yeah. You're yeah. about to experience what I want. <laughs> you lucky bastard you, handshake. Exactly. Thing, oh, yeah. you old lucky so-and-so. <laughs> silly sausage. <laughs> yeah, I went upstairs and... Uh, and he said, Godspeed, as he, <laughs> that, and that he is, did a military salute as he walked out. <laughs> pretty the, much the yeah. goodbye was, you know... <laughs> live long and prosper. Yeah, the, it was the fucking. Vulcan, live long and prosper. That Jesus. is the single best. And then at about seven thirty in the morning, as we were about to leave, she dropped me off in a jeep. Beautiful morning, nice. and everybody saw it. It was what a shallow what moron would want out of an evening on an island if you were only going to be there for one night. Once again, Dante. Mwah. Chef's kiss. Right. The right. police. Dunn drove me after I smoked all night. It was a. Uh... <sighs> it is a. It is a. We do have. Uh, Sorry, I'm moments. excitable. We do have these moments uh, I'm that excited. we go. Oh, this is this is this the every last. now and then, right? Yeah, it's the kind of like thing about this business. Being a people. comedian, it's a disco ball. Yeah, and every now and then you hit that one light. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's an amazing. Right. It's a nice right in the pocket. But you right. do it often. I, I mean, there's a bunch of. I, it, what's There's funny something is, about this life I fucking love. That's um, part of it, but it's not the whole thing. I. It's funny because like even when Harry and I are talking, there were people who like I, I remember we were talking to Greer, and Greer was remember that time did you uh you elbow PJ in the face, <laughs> and I and I go I don't I don't remember that at all right, and he's like yeah you know, and I'm like it, it ain't a story if there wasn't a full fight. Like if but it was a you blow, didn't count it. I didn't yeah. even count that. Was shit crazier when we were younger, or is, oh yeah, it was I think so, right? Yeah, well, you can't do shit now. Yeah, you can't get away with a motherfucking thing. Everybody, I count. mean, look, if you don't give a fuck about getting caught, it, it could be wild. But I mean, and we see that all the time. But cameras, dog, I'm camera not. phones. I was like, even when the dude when I screamed on the dude and he came, he was get he pulled up to get out the car, and I said, all right. Um, I have to, I'm going to have to let him throw the first punch. Then I'll just break his arm on the A bar on the, uh, on the inside the truck. I wouldn't, I wouldn't even got out. I just let him have to throw into the, into the cab. Every now and then, the you know mistake. who God takes yeah. care of, right? Fools and babies. Yeah. I tried to punch Arturo Gotti in the face one night. He is the, I, I want to make sure that everybody understands. I'm talking about a boxer who fought Irish Mickey Ward. G A T T A Arturo fought Mayweather Gatti. too. He fought Mayweather. This guy would have fucking. And my friend was with me too. I ran in a room and my <laughs> my plan was I said, "Yo, I'm gonna punch this fucking guy Arturo in the face, and when I do, you hold me back." <laughs> <laughs> Why was there a beef? That was the plan. Yeah, I at the time I owned the topless bar in Virginia Beach. That's uh. where he was from, and uh, <clears throat> I went to the fights and I was dating the ring girl. Uh -huh. How good is my life? That's a great life. I've been a fucking very lucky boy. Yeah. I'm dating the ring girl. She's a ridiculous piece of ass. She gets off. She's sitting next to me. She sends him a drink. And I go, hey, I hope he's got a nice fucking car because you need a ride home. Uh -huh. I leave her there. I go to my friend's bar. And the way my friend's bar was, was like one central room and then little rooms off. So we're there after closing, and I'm in one room, and it turns out he's in another, and I go to use the bathroom, and I see him, and I go, yo, that girl who sent you the drink, are you banging that girl? He's like, what? And I repeat it two or three times, but he's oh, doing Jesus. that because she's behind me. Mm. 
So now I go in the other room and I'm drinking at the time and I'm doing doubles of Jack Daniels oh, and I'm with my friend Corey. He, he likes to tell this story in a different tone. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just fucking drinking and with I'm a lot steaming. of a lot of this fucking idiot. Yes, a lot of that. Yeah. There's, there's this a fucking great guy. many descriptors yeah. Yeah, yeah. that I don't find flattering. <laughs> <laughs> and so I I do a double and I'm like, yo. I'm going to go punch this guy in the fucking face. And when I do, you hold me back. So he's trying to talk me out of it, but I'm, I've, and I'm like 30, 40 pounds heavier Ugh. and uh, I'm in my twenties and I'm, I'm just fucking stupid and bigger and I'm going to go do it. So I walk into the room and he sees it and he goes, Hey, Hey, you know, I'm sorry. You want to talk to her? You want to leave with her? And it was like a Jedi mind trick. Like you did to that guy. It just opened up a valve on me and all my anger dissipated. Right. I, I was like, no, you know what? I'm in the wrong. She don't belong to me. I, I'm sorry. I apologize. I go, I get in my car, and he pulls out in a brand new BMW two-seater that you could not mm. get. And I I had, that was my shit back then. I had a brand new Infinity. Right. That, and he pulled out with her in front of me. It made me crazy. Drove like two fucking blocks. <clears throat> and the, I got in my friend's driveway, and the cops, as we walked in, went whoop, like they had, I had, by a tenth of a mile, parked the car and walked in the house, hammered off my fucking ass. I had just missed a DUI, literally by seconds. Wow. At this point, I have no idea who the fucking guy is, right? Mm -hmm. A week later, I go and I'm having a drink with my friend Phil, who owns the bar, and I go, hey, your fucking friend, Arturo, is lucky I didn't punch him in the face <laughs> the other night. And that's exactly what he does, is laughs in my face, and I stone face him, I'm like, and he goes... Oh, you're serious? Oh, my God. You don't know. And I go, <laughs> he takes me in. This is how long ago it is. He puts in a videotape in his office. <laughs> a VH, VCR. Ah, pound for pound. Yeah. They're the greatest box in the world. I tell you, got it. And take a pot. Irish Mickey Wood. I couldn't fucking <laughs> believe it. I was like, so now I see him. Like a week later, I'm out drinking, and he comes into the club. I go up. I go, hey, I just want to apologize. He goes, no, no, it's okay. Women make us crazy. He bought me a drink. I never paid for a drink around him again. Really? When he died, I remember saying to my friend Phil, bro, he was such a gentleman. He was so nice after yeah. that. I never paid for a drink. He goes, Joey, he thought you were crazy. He didn't. I never told him you didn't know who he was. He thought you knew. And you were like, Fuck. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah, and he he got his girl killed him on the heat. He, he got he, strangled. Uh, this poor no, bastard. No, it's um asphyxiation, right? Yeah, he got yeah, strangled yeah. with jerking like, off with a with a tie, with a tie. They found him with a. No, oh, no, no. That's the purse? guy from NSS. It was a purse. And well, I think more than one purse. guy can do that, the, Joey. It's a the, very popular yeah, act, yeah, yeah. and it's, uh, I mean, <laughs> you know, it's a... It's yeah, yeah. a it must be, yeah. like, I, I guess it's good. I, That's another thing I never tried. I don't want no, any I women choking that. me, yeah. Yeah. but I, I, I enjoy choking them. Uh, well, I mean... I'm not a fair deal. <laughs> Uh, well, let's see that's here. obvious. <laughs> I'm trying to see what the death thing was here. This is a long thing. Um, it was. I know it was a Louis Vuitton bag or something. The purse. I don't know. He, it, it was like the. Yeah, I don't know if it's autoerotic asphyxiation or whether it, it was. was. I think it uh, was. I think it might have been a domestic thing. I, although I don't remember anybody being charged with it, so maybe no. that's a what shitty way it? to go out, huh? Yeah. And this let's poor see, bastard. Yeah. Now I I'm telling this story. Somebody else that, like, on that Gotti level, that the girlfriend shot him. Arturo Gotti. Was it the girlfriend that shot him? I, no, I don't know. I, I don't know uh, whose girlfriend shot him. And there's one that, there's another dude that died from auto asphyxiation. Okay. I, I A know. boxer? Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I guess boxers kind of tend to be like comedians then, huh? Just kind of <laughs> fucked up. Know, every, yeah. well, trying yeah. to slow the band down yeah, on you? Yeah, yeah. Well, well, getting punched in the head will do that PTSD. to you. PTSD. On an yeah. occasion. Let's see. I don't know. There's a lot here as far as they're trying to figure out what happened. It was kind of a mystery. Mm -hmm. He was married to a Brazilian wife, and they were. And there they, you they, go. They, yeah. There it she is. She killed him. Uh, boy, yeah, it's a lot here. I don't know. I don't want to get What a here. nice guy, uh, whatever. too. Whatever. I, uh, I saw what you call it. Uh, um, what was the dude? Uh, well, I'm friends with Mark, Mark Breland, but I, I saw Jerry Cooney a couple of times. Just I saw serious. Mitch Blood Green. Yeah. At uh, oh yeah, I, I'm going way back. He was yeah. like the cool Mo D yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> of boxers, bro. No, I saw uh, him at Broad uh, J Street. 
walking around in the late 80s screaming about how he wanted to fight Tyson and people were laughing. Yeah. He was killing. Wasn't trying to, but he was yeah. killing. Yeah. That dude was wild. But, I mean, oh, hell yeah. Mike Tyson tells that story about him being like Jason. Like he kept hitting the motherfucker. He kept getting up. Oh, is that right? Yeah, I didn't even know they fought. Oh, well, street, or, a lot of street over, fights. Oh, is that right? Yeah, Street. Oh, no that's kidding. Dance. That's the story. Really? Do yeah. tell. Tell, because well, I'm sure I'm, I'm not, not sure. the only one that hasn't heard it. It's in his one-man show he does oh, it. See, I've never watched oh, yeah. it. So it says really Green good. was also known for an incident that began in the early hours of August 23rd, 1988 in Harlem. Tyson and some friends were shopping at Dapper Dan's, a Harlem clothing store. <laughs> Let me explain uh, Dapper Dan's. You would go in there yeah. and you could get Louis Vuitton leather. You could oh, get a, a jumsuit suit suit. made right. out I'm of Louis Vuitton. For the listeners who are not. Yeah. Yes, yes, you could get You could get your 190E Mercedes Benz and have the whole interior done in MCM vinyl and shit like that. Yeah, right. there's a clothing store where, I mean, that was the clothing store. Yeah, yeah but yeah. I, I think if we're going to, Dapper Dan was a guy who put his mark on fashion yeah. in the way that uh, young black people did with hip hop and graffiti and yeah. all that B-boy shit. He was the fashion expression yes. of that and the of definitive voice yeah. Yeah. of that era. Absolutely. Mm. Mm. Okay, so uh, it says Props here, to Dapper Dan. <laughs> Dapper Dan. It's still in business. Still in business up there. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, okay. He was he was consulting for Louis Vuitton for a while. Yeah, yeah I, I Green, just read yeah. something about Green that. had heard that Tyson was in the area and found him demanding... <laughs> wait. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> He's got a little ODB in him. <laughs> That's fucking crazy. Tyson was... In the area. <laughs> Who hears Mike Tyson is around I'm and goes, a... get my car keys. <laughs> Where the fuck are my keys? <laughs> Sheila! It's... Where the fuck? I told you to stop moving my keys! <laughs> He what is the fuck the, are you doing? He's the example of who you don't want to fight. He's the guy like when two old guys are like, what are you, Mike Tyson over here? He's the example. Oh, my God. What well, a fucking the maniac. Joey fuck Gay. It, listen, <laughs> hey, he is will the you drop me? I can't find my keys. Yeah. There was a lot of Jack Daniels in that version yeah. of Joey Wow, well, there's a lot of cocaine in that version of Mitch Blood yeah. Green, oh, yeah. I do hey, believe. Hey, hey, yeah, hey, allegedly. Hey, hey. I guess. Wait, what year was it? Uh, 1988. Oh, it's 100% yeah, certainty. Yeah. The city was awash in pure cocaine. I mean, That's what anybody... You get it in your, get it in your coffee Africans. back in the day. Dapper Dan would make yeah. you a Coke spoon <laughs> out, of a, out of a Benjamin Franklin spoon. While you waited. While you waited what? to be fit <laughs> for your uh, jumpsuit with the... Uh, put a, and put a Gucci you had, If Gucci you took the tunnel into... You had to pay in cash and do a bump yeah. or they wouldn't let you in yeah, the yeah. city. That was the way they did it back then. So uh, Green had heard that Tyson was in the area <laughs> and found him demanding a rematch. A scuffle ensued. Green allegedly threw a punch and Tyson responded with a punch of his own, closing Green's eye and uh, and requiring stitches to his nose. Tyson broke his hand in the incident and had to postpone his fight with Frank Bruno. Yeah. <laughs> Later on, although a New York jury awarded Green $45,000 in damages in a civil lawsuit against Tyson, the sum did not cover the legal fees. Tyson later recounted this version uh, of the fight in his book and Broadway show, Undis The Undisputed Truth, as well as uh, on his Hot Boxing with Mike Tyson podcast. <laughs> Yeah, I am definitely gonna yeah. watch that. Yeah. He, uh... Him talking about Mitch Blood Green. That's oh my amazing. God. Hitting that motherfucker. He just kept getting up. <laughs> and not only that, but he kept coming around to the point where like he would uh he started having these panic attacks when Mitch Blood Green would show up <laughs> yeah. because he's like, Now I gotta beat the fuck this. This, this is this is like... what this is what took Sonny Liston down <laughs> with Mahom Ali. You big ugly mom, you big mummy. He used to show oh my up. God. Uh, yeah, Tyson, uh, uh, several years later, in 1988, uh, Green and ended up feuding, fighting Tyson again in a notorious street fight. <laughs> a toothpick dangling between his lips became his trademark at any public appearance. All right, I thought that was about the fight, but anyway. Uh, oh, my God, that is yeah, so Joey, funny. Yeah, Joey, that was amazing. Those are yeah. great stories, man. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, uh, Joey, thanks, Patreon. bro. Uh, yo, I appreciate y'all, man. I'm, I, I, Y'all have been sending me messages on the Patreon. I'm... It's been a little busy, but I promise I'll get back to you on everything. Uh, you know, I appreciate you, man. Keep following, man. And, yeah, and spread the you. word. Follow us all on uh, social media and stuff. And subscribe on the YouTube channel, please. Anything we do helps us out, man. I love y'all, man. Thank Same. you. Well, put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't. Yo, what's up? What's up? Welcome to the Patreon, yo. I love y'all. I love y'all. I love y'all. 
Um, we're doing listen to mail, so let's get into it, Harry. What we got, that's bro? Right, that's right. Uh, thank you know you. what? Let me shout out the. Uh, the I want to shout out the new, the new, new Patreon, Patreon members. Yeah. yeah, I haven't done that in a minute, and I and I really owe. Um, shout out to Nate Carter, uh, Def Jam Baller. Uh, shout out to George R. White, Ar- Amar Arrington, N S O A X L, Brad Cam, and Eman. Um, these all sound like uh, people used to play on that and one basketball tour. Yeah, 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 Remember yeah. the and one? The professor. The spider. professor. Spider. Escalade. I, I do miss the guy who used to do play by play by walking oh, that, down. That the, was Escalade. No, he actually played. Did he play? Yeah, he died. He was oh, huge. Jesus. The big dude. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, they used to call him Escalade. Escalade. I mean, it's been a while. I always yeah. act like he just died, but I mean, they stopped doing that yeah, tour like 10 years ago. He was a bad ago, boy. Right? He was a bad boy. He was supposed to go play pro, but he just couldn't lose the weight. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, yeah, but he just, you know, did his thing anyway. All yeah, right. All right. Well, let's get into some of these. Again, These uh, we did a special episode for the regular people, but those peons aren't here. <laughs> this, Fuck is for, this is for our favorite people, the people who uh, put money in our pockets, and we appreciate Support that. Support us. A lot of that goes to Dante's baby, his uh, Dante <coughs> Jones baby formula. Let's be honest. Most of it goes to your, your shoes. Yeah, well, shoes. I haven't bought a pair of shoes really? in a long time, dog. I, it's been a while. It's all been going to the baby. I ain't oh, going really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the responsibility. That's the right thing to do. It is. Got to make sure your baby's fed instead of having nice shoes. Yeah, well, I mean, let's be honest. Do I ever need another pair of shoes ever? You in don't. My life? But that's no. that. That we 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 crossed that threshold. Yeah, we like a long seven, time eight ago. Seven years ago. Yeah, yeah. You don't need a lot of. I don't think you need anything. Yeah. Really, if you think yeah. about it. But um, here we go. Uh, this is from SF. Appreciate the work on. Uh, oh, let me put myself on camera here. Jesus, I forgot to do that. I'm on this show too. God damn yeah. it. Uh, appreciate the work of the man school team. I think getting. Got is a rite of passage that can help you set uh, step up as a man as you have better read on how things work and how you should approach life. I wonder if there are other rites of passages that can do similar uh, and how you can uh, enact them or if they only happen to you by chance. Uh, separately, uh, interested to know uh, what questions... Dante is still pondering. All right, so we'll take these one at a time. Let me do right. that one okay. with SF. These are all our Patreon listeners, so we'll get to all of them. Okay. What's the... Uh... Uh, the first question is, uh, I was wondering if there are any other rites of passage that can do similar. You know, it, it, here's the thing. I, I, I think that people are looking for, a lot of times they're, they're looking for a particular path. Um, and one of the things that I think that I've always tried to teach dudes is that I'm not trying to make anybody be me. Uh, I want you to learn these, I want you to learn these principles so that you can reapply them to your own life in your own way and kind of create your path. Like whatever your, you know, I'm totally not judgmental about what your choice is. If your choice is to find a good woman to marry and have a great marriage with in a relationship and kids, it's fine. If your choice is to have multiple women and hang out and, and, and smash and hang out, whatever the fuck you want to do, there's, there's no judgment call. First of mm. all, who the hell am I to judge anybody anyway mm. with my filthy ass? But, um, who are you, Judge Joe Brown? I, I don't I, think so. Uh, or that other one? What's the name that just uh, ran for California? Oh, the, the fucking dickhead, the one that won. Uh, we already forgot his name. Isn't that great? Larry Elder. Larry Elder. Yeah, yeah. He said that we should pay. Uh, we should Repar- pay. If repar- anyone deserves reparations, it should the, be the slave owners. The slave owners because they lost reparations because they lost their property. That's what he said. Can you Fuck imagine it, you put that on a on a blue index uh, card and you I give it a people, thumbs up and you go out like, yeah, this feels right. <laughs> There's always been people selling out. You know, Montezuma sold out his people and let the Spaniards into his. Did he? Yeah, yeah. And they end up killing him too. Cause, the so people that's killed happened. him or the Spaniards the killed him? The Spaniards them. killed him after yeah, they got You can't so, trust a dirty uh, Spaniard. <laughs> you know. If, yeah. if anybody knows it's me, you can't trust those filthy conquistadors. Those conquistadors, right? Um, so, um,. So I don't, I don't, I, there's no judgment call about what you want in your life. Uh, I don't, I don't have it. My, my job is to just teach you how to facilitate it. Um, so getting got just happens. It happens because you get, it just, just don't know you make better. mistakes, you make mistakes and you, 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 you wear your heart on the sleeve and you're not, you don't know all these things. So yeah. And, let's explain getting got, well, I guess the Patreon listeners would know, but I, yeah, I, I it know. was just, you, you end up in a relationship where you end up, you know, you get your heart broken. You get your heart broke and you, you're like, because what, you what thought you? somebody loved you. 
and, and than maybe they, they did. and maybe they did at one time and it changed. Maybe yeah. they didn't, uh, whatever. But it's it's just being you feel like a sucker when it's done. <laughs> the feel like job someone turkey punked you, yeah, like a chump. R.I.P. Uh, Melvin Van Peebles. <laughs> yeah, shout out to my dog Mel- Melvin. Melvin I used to hang out at his house. I just posted a picture. Oh, is that from his house? Yeah, I was hanging out with Melvin. Oh, Mel- so that. Mario Van Peebles had a. His father was a big dude. Uh, famous did a, director. The famous director did this uh, old classic movie called Sweetback, where There's he a lot of films, where yeah. he actually fucked everybody in the movie. Like everybody, all the love scenes, he was actually fucking them. Wow, okay. which is funny because he was ninety and he was still fucking people in the house. So oh, these old broads was coming. He was smashing these old broads, getting head and stuff. It was fucking amazing. Good for Marvin. Um, but he just passed away about two, three days ago. Um, anyway. Black, Black legend. Black legend. Uh, but, um, so it's a rite of passage. You know, so it's happens. a rite of passage. It's getting your heart broke. And, and the, you, you know, I teach how to get past that is, you know, getting past that. I always say it's five pussies away. It's a way of reprogramming your, reprogramming your computer. The first... The first chick you get laid with, you're awkward because you're accustomed to the woman that you with. The second one, it's a little less awkward. The third one is pretty decent. The fourth one, you're like, oh, who was that chick I was fucking before? Right. Um, and because your body reboots. You know what's funny? Uh, it may take more than five women for this, but every once in a while, back in the day, there was yeah. there would be a girl or two that really hurt my feelings, you know, because, like, they just were not into me. And yeah. they were not great about it, and they hurt my feelings. And you feel in that moment, you're like, oh, fucking, that, that's so, it stings. Yeah, but I, and then but also, the amazing part is it'll a year go by, too. Even if it takes whatever, maybe you're over them, but you're still in the back. And then you forget their name. Yeah. And yeah. you have the memory about, and remember that chick I, I uh, yeah. we hooked up, but then, what the fuck was her name? And yeah. that's the best feeling in the world. Yeah. That, because that's how much she doesn't matter. That's how much she doesn't matter in your yeah. life. You're like. It could have been Suzette. I never went out with a Suzette. Yeah. Was it a Suzette? Yeah. It was so a Stacy. Sophia. Yeah. No, Sophia. Yeah. Sophie. No. Yeah. You know, and it's just yeah. like, oh, I haven't thought about her in a fucking three years. But when you have that kind of insecurity about yourself, then yeah. that's what you do. You was I good enough? Maybe I wasn't good enough. And then somebody. And what what happens is. You you you're letting people judge you who really don't even have their own sh- their, their shit together at all in their own life. I mean, I remember that chick you had. She went back to a heroin addict. Remember the? the she went back. She yeah. broke. W- I may or may not have just mentioned her name oh, as, a, as yeah, an example. Whatever. It's on Patreon. Fuck her. <laughs> yeah, but, she went. She dated the heroin. I think they're still together. I don't know. Yeah, well, I'm quite I'm quite sure that's working out just yeah, yeah, swimmingly. Sure. Um, you know. But, I don't know. I haven't thought about. I wouldn't know Dante. Haven't thought about her yeah. in years, literally. Yeah. Um, and in that moment, I was heartbroken. That stung a lot in that moment. But you were also in a place where you were just starting to figure sure, out yeah. what it was. And so, it really, when you, when you get down to it, it's really not about. It's really not about the girl. It's about you. It, it's really about what 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 you perceive your own self esteem as, mm-hmm. what you perceive course, your own yeah. value as. Yeah. Because if you if when once you understand that somebody goes, oh, I'm not into, oh, okay, fine, I you know I'll take my ball and go, right. and you know that they're missing out because you know what you bring yeah. to the table. You know that yeah. you you bring. There were times the when a girl would just not be interested in going out, and I'd be like, in my head, and I don't I don't feel like I don't need to I don't need to say it out loud. Yeah, yeah. That's a shame because we could have had a yeah, really good time. Been dope, but you, you don't you know, know how much fun we would have had. Yeah, um, you know, it's just, it's just, um, even get to the point where you, 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 you start to argue. Sometimes you'll be you're like, "Don't you understand?" And then you go, "Whoa, whoa, whoa, wait, what, what am, am I, I doing? doing? Why am I trying I, to sell this? I'm selling this Bentley. Look, this, yeah. somebody's gonna buy this Bentley. Yeah. You know, it's, it's got ten miles on it. Yeah. it somebody's buying I got this news Bentley. For you. Somebody already bought this Bentley. Exactly. A couple people. Exactly. This Bentley's being shared. Exactly. Yeah. So it's ride share, a little ride share. Yeah, ride share program. You know, you know. Carpooling. Uh, People carpooling and this Bentley. Wow. Well, I've had a couple of carpools. Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, you know, me not wanting people, I don't want people to be me. I just want to be teach them how to be the best version of themselves um, from all the things that I've learned and the mistakes that I've learned. And so, you know, uh, getting, you know, uh, you know, getting you getting your heart broke is part of it. Getting God is part of it. Um, and there's no real standard. I mean, some people 
don't go through that. Some people don't go through it in a harsh way. Some people go through it in several ways. Different. So there's no real set path. Everybody gets to everybody gets to pick their own path and to navigate it in the way that they want. To the same token, and if you if I'm telling you what to do and you're not listening to me, there's a good chance you're gonna go through the shit that you shouldn't be going through. Right. Because, right. And I, and I'm not just a I'm not a prodigy. I've made these mistakes. Sure. Is why That's I'm, how you know. That's how I know. I mean, I've done... But I'm the same person mistakes. that you. Jerry Rice made mistakes. Right. Jerry Rice will tell you he was a smarter player at the end of his career. He may have been like a little bit slower because right. he's still fast as shit at the end of his career. Yeah, yeah. But he'll tell you he, he never was smarter than when at then the end of old. his career. Well, the other thing I think is when you go through pain... Um, once you go through that pain, there's a scar. You end up with scar tissue, and you can never be hurt in that way again. In that same way again, it's like once you've been hurt in that particular way. Now, not to say that you can't be hurt in other ways, but that w- yeah. in that th- the context of what you were feeling in that moment, you'll never feel that again. Mm. So, um, so there's no real no set path. It's you. You kind of pick your a, path. I'm never gonna get a girl throw me through that barbershop window again. <laughs> Well, like that you, girl did. Yeah, I mean, because yeah. you, as soon as she starts leaning you towards the barbershop window, dude, you go, whoa, whoa, wait oh, a minute. This I feels funny. This is coming I know where this is going. Wait so. a minute. Why is Shawn Michaels smiling at me when a minute ago he was <laughs> giving me this stink eye? <laughs> I don't yeah. like this at all. Yeah, this is. I'm so, watch out for that sweet chin music because I've been hit with I that love before. A sweet chin music. So, uh, all right, let's do another question. SF had. Uh, let's see here. <coughs> Separately, would be interested to know what questions Dante is still pondering himself, like a professor of a subject who is a um, world expert, but still chipping away at the edge of the unknown. Well, he, that's a dope question, dope way to put the question. Um, I would say this. Um, I'm constantly trying to figure out how to do less and accomplish more Mm. um so there were conversations that i would have had years ago about you know setting boundaries and now i i will set boundaries without uh, having just go right to setting the boundaries just just setting the boundaries actively or you'll cut right to the conflict oh yeah oh whichever i don't i don't i don't have the conflict i don't interpret i've already interpreted so i'll 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 give an example um because this is patreon uh so i was having a problem with my my wife washing the dishes Mm. um she she kind of is a bit of a hippie okay so she doesn't wash the dishes all the time, and sometimes she wash the, wouldn't wash the dishes, leave the dishes out for days on end. But I understood also that it's very important for her to be a it's very important for her to be a a good housewife. Right. She wants to appear as if she's a good housewife, which for the most part she is. But there's you know when you don't. When you don't, when you haven't had things, you don't know how to keep things. Right. So she grew up real poor. She didn't really she have a lot of possessions and stuff like that. Or family, mother. But in any event, so instead of do the dishes, do the dishes, do the dishes. Right. Every time the dishes were not done, I would do the dishes. Mm-hmm. Now I know that sounds to guys like, why would you do that? Then she doesn't have to do it. Well, if you're with somebody who doesn't, who's not affected by the fact. That you're that they they are priding themselves on a good on on being a good housewife and you're doing their job and they don't have they they don't have any remorse about you doing their job you're with the wrong person right um, if they don't feel any guilt about that about and that. I mean it would little because you know she's she's from Britain and she you know drinks tea and shit tea with milk goofy shit like that and i would you know so when she would fit by the time she would finish the cup of tea i would grab the cup of tea and i would wash it right and she would be like no no i'll get it i go no no i got it right right and so it got to be the point where where um you took that role away from her. i took away from her and so she really couldn't say hey i'm a great housewife because i was doing her job and what i found what her response to me doing that was that she started washing the dishes because i was because when people um define themselves by certain in in certain terms if they make declarations about who they are and you attack that they have to respond to that so my point being is i could have had a conversation about 
doing the dishes or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Instead of doing the dishes, I I led with an action mm. that made that threatened the very person that she thought she was. Interesting. Yeah. Um, the other thing was, if the dishes weren't done, mm. uh, she didn't want anybody to know that the dishes weren't done. And so I would I would invite people to the house. Mm. The minute I would invite to the house, she would scramble and get the dishes done. And then she would, you know, I'm, I'm talking, you didn't tell me that they're coming. I go, well, then the house should be prepared. Right. It, it, we, like, this we is not about, this, this is, you know, I'm not a, I'm not a fake. I'm not a fraud. Right. The house should be clean. The house should be clean. Now, if it's not clean and people come over and you're panicked because you feel as though that you this is. A, make sure the house is always then you clean. Ma- because I'm not, I'm not going to, what I'm not going to. strategy, Dante? Uh, what about going, no, no, I'll take care of the dishes and then <laughs> and breaking them all with a baseball bat. But hammer's and good. And going, I got it. I got it. Done. Here's the problem. Hammer, hammer as well? Yeah, hammer. hammer rubber break. mallet? With a rubber mallet? Ham- yeah, we can okay. break it. But my thing is this. I, You know me. I'm going to get top of the line plates mm. i'm not breaking my plates mm. i'm not breaking my plates because you don't want to wash them mm. you know and so once you, once you understand where where somebody butters their bread or where their roots are you can you can adjust the behavior by the actions you take as opposed to the conversations that you have now i'm not saying you can't have that conversation but if you have that conversation and it's not it's really not working. Then you lead with an action. The next thing you should do is lead with an action. Um, it, it's a weird thing. I know this is going to sound crazy, but even my 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 son has this thing. He was hot as shit. He likes fucking with the the air conditioner. So he'll cut off the air conditioner. He'll come in, run over to the air, and I'll be like, no, 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 and he does it anyway, and he runs away. Mm. Firstly, now I shock could, collar. I think shock collar is the way to go. No. I, well, oh, no. What I do is I grab him, I pull him back, I take his hand, and I make him turn it back on, and then I drag his ass back to where he was. Hmm. And he gets upset, falls on the ground, he's pissed. But he understands that there's a there's a direct consequence to what he does, and so he stops doing it because of the he doesn't want to get dragged, he doesn't want to go get dragged, but he wants to do what he wants to do, and because of that, I've made this uncomfortable situation based on his actions, and because I make that it uncomfortable, he doesn't like it, and so the the the, the behavior extinguishes because of that. Right. The just that you have to be super consistent. Right. Right. You yeah, can't I mean, do it some of the time. It's the same way you raise pets. Yeah, it like, is. Like it absolutely we're all, is. But we are animals. It's we just are a very animals. higher level. So with pets, it's always you. I mean, I learned to do it with a squirt gun or like a, a yeah. water bottle, a squirt bottle. But you, you can't squirt. do that some of the time. So you have to do it all the time. You have, you to, have to do to it all the time. You have to devote your day for the, you know, especially when you're training the dog. You got to go, today's the day we're going to solve this situation. Absolutely. And it's all day. And, and if, there's no, if there's no option but that behavior then that behavior that behavior becomes habitual and that's so um, those are things that i'm complaining comp- contemplating is how to get more with less have you read the tim ferris thing or no tim yeah, ferris is his great book. yeah yeah, yeah he's yeah. really great at figuring out how to get the uh cuz he's a stat- statistician so yeah. he's always trying to find the easiest way so i'm i'm still tweaking those things and and uh you know um and i'm not uh, when I'm having a debate or discussion, I'm not having a debate or discussion about the things that I can already establish that the person knows. You sure. Know, you know, I'm 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 much more a, and I find that even in women, that's the same thing. If somebody is, if you've told somebody that you don't like something, right? I don't like when you do this. You've had that conversation. You shouldn't have that conversation again. The next thing from that should be some kind of action. Hmm. If there is an action and a consequence, then you got Then somebody will decide whether or not you're important enough to make the adjustment. And if somebody's not willing to make the adjustment, then the relationship will end. You have to be willing to end the relationship because this person will not adjust. They, they don't care. Basically, they're saying, "I don't care about your happiness." Right. And if you're with somebody who does not care about your happiness, you shouldn't be with them. You shouldn't be with them. Yeah. Well, all right. Let's do this uh, other question here. Um, what was Dante's rationale for getting married, given all the downsides to it? Um, Thank you, Sean. The immortality. Uh, I don't. I'm not a religious person. Um, mm. The immortality of. The, the, I, 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 and I don't believe in an afterlife. I believe the immortality is moving your genes to the next generation. Hmm. So I really didn't want. I wanted to have a son. I wanted to have a son, 
And I mean, well, I wanted to have a child. Right. Uh, son, I got lucky. Nice. But uh, I wanted to you have a child. You did want to have a son. Yeah, it's I did. Okay. Oh, it's that, okay to have a no, preference. No, I did. Yeah, I, I'm not saying I didn't. Not, I said yeah. I got lucky. So, yeah, yeah. But um, I wanted to have a son, and that was because of that. And I felt as though um, because of the fact that um, he was my son and uh, and my wife is an, is an amazing mother. Right. Um, whatever shortcoming she has, uh, we're working on that. But she's an amazing mother in terms of the way she raises this kid, and I know that he, w- I know that he will be well taken mm. care of. Um, but I also wanted to really honest to be honest, I wanted to pass my genes on to the next generation. Right. I want that. That is my immortality. Is my son. What about people who say that you could just have the baby without you could, getting married? But um, for me. There's um, health insurance and stuff. Yeah, there's health like, insurance. Yeah. There's a lot of logistics in, yeah. in terms of magic married that I wanted uh, them to be available to. And I also didn't want, I mean, my wife is totally dependent upon me, you know, financially and whatever. Her job is to take care of this chick, child and make sure this, this child is well taken care of. Right. Um, and that was my choice. Now, if it's different than that, you know, I, 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 I do think. I wanted to be in the house with my child. Gotcha. Um, because I wanted to have the influence on him so that I, yeah. I can make a good human being. And I'm not saying that I, I'm also somebody, if it, if it doesn't work and you well, have to split. teach him how to slap box. Exactly. Uh, be you. Nobody's going to teach a real naked but me. He's got to learn it from me. That's right. Um, but uh, also if it goes sour and I have to end up not being with her, then I know that she's taken care of. But the, f- the, the legality of the marriage was important so that she would be taken care of and my son was taken care of. So there was a financial aspect of it. There yeah. was a, uh, I'm also 55 years old. So yeah. it's like, you know, it's not like I'm sowing wild oats. You right, know? right, right, right. I mean, I might make a little oatmeal every once in a while, but, you know, it ain't wild oats. So You don't use wild oats? No. Nah, you use fresh nah, cut? Nah, French, well, I French like cut. Stone cut. Stone cut. Stone cut. Um, so, but it was all very thought out. Okay, yeah. It was thought out. Uh, financially, it was thought out. And I think... I think those things are important. I think that you you make uh, understand that it's a business. You know, it's a it's a it's a it's a corporation, and right. it needs to be treated as such. Um, right. So, you know, knowing the ins and outs uh, is really important, and understand the sacrifice, and that's why. Okay, um, we're gonna answer this. I think this will be the last one for this episode. We'll, we have more. We'll get to. I mean. You guys hit us up with so many. We're going to get to all of them, we promise. But uh, for this episode, we're going to have to close it on this one from Cam. I know Cam. Yeah. Uh, recently broke it off with the person I was seeing. Still good friends. But I had to break it off because down the line, I want my own kids. And she is. Did I read this or no? Older. Older. She... No, you, we were talking about. about oh, we were kids. talking about. That's what. Yeah. All right. Uh, down the line, I want my own kids. And she is an older chick and can't. Even though I grew to love her, I didn't want to take the option away from myself. So now I'm working on myself to set myself up better to create more options. Working out, focusing on finance. Oh, you did I did this. read this. Did I'm too. sorry. Yeah, I read this during yeah, the free yeah. one. Uh, this is about Yeah, you got to do it all, Cam. You, you got to do, do it all. all. You got to lay the five bricks. You got to you got to find time to do it and balance it out because you being a human being um, being a human being, pursuing your, your needs is you, you, you have to pursue yourself emotionally. I mean, the, the emotional part of it, you just don't, you, it, you know, you don't want to be one sided, you know, where if, if I'm, a, I'm always a, like I'm a big boxing fan. The worst thing in the world is to see somebody who, you know, counter punches, but he can't he can't fight moving forward. Or a guy who uh, fucks up the whole thing. Yeah, you wanna you wanna be well rounded, and the way you're well you rounded feel, is you gotta catch, work. You wanna be able to you gotta field work. and hit. You, you gotta wanna work. do it all because you never. And know. there may be things that you're exceptional at, but yeah. you wanna be able to do to have a basic fundamental understanding of how to handle everything. Mm-hmm. So that, I think so that's we important. did read that one. Sorry about that, Cam. Thank you though. Um, Jason writes, I'd like to know if Dante's perspective has changed. Since he's raising Dante Jr., do you still believe your happiness comes first, then your child, and or a relationship? Question mark. Well, here's the thing. Without my happiness, then I'm not going to be able to make my child mm. happy. I mean, so if you make these sacrifices, the, uh, the, the, let me explain that, that concept because it's an old concept that we talked about. For Part of being a man is, is, is you being a provider. Um, you are a man is worthless if he does not provide. Trust me, hmm. um, that's how a, a woman bases your value. Um, so you 
having a woman who's unhappy and unfulfilled you take that personal if you have a child that is hungry you take that personal all of those things either so all of those things that are you that 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 make you a man are are, are also encompass the happiness of your family and your child and so on and so forth but it's still your happiness i'm a happy man when my son is well taken care of and well fed without that i'm not if um, if my wife is not fulfilled, if I haven't done the things, and and I don't, that doesn't mean that um, you know sometimes there's a, a level of unreasonableness that you know because women are emotional and they're unreasonable yeah. in a lot of cases. Sure. Um, but knowing that I can handle those things and all of those things are in place is part yeah. of my happiness. Right. And so even in the context of that, it's still my happiness. Does that mean that? Um, you know, I'm gonna buy a new Ducati when I can. Well, I mean, I will, but I mean, I, yeah, I did buy a Ducati. Ducati. Yeah, but I mean, a terrible example. I, uh, but I mean, I can afford it. It didn't. It wasn't something. It was. It was money that I had that Does I that could spend. Mean on I'm me. gonna get a silver chain of a skull on my neck. Yeah. Well, I got that too. Oh, so you gotta, that one. It's a bad but, example. But the point being is, yeah. all those other things are in place as well. Sure. They're very much. You make sure you take care of it. Yeah. yeah. And so yes, it, 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 the, the philosophy is the same. I just think that what is it, what encompasses your happiness is. There is there anything that you have sacrificed with having this kid? Um, Dante Jr., who has a name. We call him Baby Dante, but um, you call him Baby Dante? Yeah. Uh, sacrifice? No, not really. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that my life, I, I have worked so worked so hard to be able to do the things that I wanted to do. Yeah. Um. You also put yourself in a position where the your wife is a stay at home wife yeah. and a stay at home mom. That was all thought out. Yeah, that was all. Yeah, yeah. Based. So you don't have to. So you still work. I would say you sacrifice like sleep and time. Yeah, yeah. You, know, you do spend time. Yeah, but I mean, honestly, if I if I didn't have this situation, I'd be out hustling anyway. You know what I mean? That's a that's a sacrifice though. If you think about it. Yeah, right. I just I think I work smarter. Okay, you know, fair enough. I work smarter. Fair enough. I, I don't I don't just randomly go hang out in comedy clubs anymore just to you hang pick out. Pick and choose a yeah, little more. I pick yeah, a little yeah, and choose, yeah, yeah, yeah. and and you know I you know it's life is good you know. Good. My, my life is good. I mean I, I but I think that you have to think about what I I think I had really defined what it would look like. I kind of had an idea of what it looked like, what it was going to look like, um, before I kind of went into it. So, you know. I think if you think about that and, and you think that that's a possibility and you can get as close to that as possible. Then can we answer fair. one more real sure, quick? Because sure. this is time sensitive. I want to be, I want to take care of everybody mm. the best we can here. Uh, this is uh, from Michael. Me and my ex uh, were virgins when she broke up with me in March this year. She was ready before I was. I wanted her first time to be perfect for her, so I wanted to book a holiday. Book a holiday. Oh, it might be international. I'm sorry. I'm an American. I don't know okay. these crazy terms. Problem is, I lost my job. Both of us abstained for religious reasons, but I thought, fuck it. I don't want to wait anymore. I had sex with a woman who was hot, and we had chemistry, but nothing more. Recently, me and my ex have reconnected, and the chemistry is still there. There's been a lot of sex talk, and we might have sex. I told her that I'm not a virgin, and she feels hurt, and that I've wasted her time which is not the case. How do I handle this? I worry she's heartbroken and never wants to speak to me again. Your advice would be much appreciated. Okay, so here's the here's the thing. Um, you guys broke. They broke up. They did break up. They broke yeah. up, and he went and got laid, right? Mm -hmm. And so, in her mind, uh, she's being really unreasonable to think that you she should break up. You guys could break up, and then you would still be put your life on pause for her until she came to to if she came back which wasn't even a which wasn't even in the cards i mean that the fact that you got back together is fine but who knew that was going to happen she broke up with me right. in march of this year okay, so she so broke up she, with you so the fact oh, nobody gives a fuck about what i mean to be really honest nobody gives a fuck about what her that her feelings are hurt or mm. feelings are not mm. hurt it doesn't really make no difference you want to do this or what yeah. You want to be together. You, you want to be together, or you don't want to be together. If you don't, then let's move the fuck well, on. Well, I just feel I, I don't give a. Oh. Fuck. Do you want to do this or not? I just want. This is a funny thing. I I I remember I was dating this chick, and you remember this how you remember I was dating this chick, and she mm -hmm. found out that I was a pimp when I was younger. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so she's like, I, I, I really need to talk to you, mm -hmm. and I go, Yeah, okay. Yeah, what, what it is? What was what it is? <laughs> 
So she shows up at the comedy club and she goes, you know, I was talking to a friend of mine and they heard an interview you did and you were a pimp at one time. And I go, yeah, absolutely. I was in my 20s and I, you know, this is, it's not something I'm particularly proud of, but it's something that happened. And she was like, well, I just, you know, I don't know. And I go, did you come here to break up because of something I did when I was 23 years old? I go, I go, because if you wanted to break up, we could just do that. I mean, is, is that what you came here for? And I was just so indignant about the fact that she wanted mm. to scrutinize something I did when I was 23 years old and, and, and much later. Now, I, I assume that he, this kid is younger. I would, I would uh, hope because so. Because he's, you know, talking about virginity and religion. I hope religion he's not 58. And, and all that's, kinds that's of kids. a lot of other problems. But the, the point is, listen, you don't owe anybody anything. Um, and, and it's not a problem for you. And if it's not a problem for you, happen. and if and if it's for a problem for her, then move on. Who gives a fuck? Well, what you're, you're not gonna do is maintain this relationship and have you browbeat me and about browbeat it. me and put my nuts in a ringer about something something that you broke up. If you wanted to fuck, you could have fucked me at any given time. Mm. So, so she doesn't get to. You don't get to have it both ways. Is my right. point. You either decide that this is what you want, and if she wants to rekindle this, then the then ultimately it's do you want to work this? I I, I don't want to discuss this anymore. And you shouldn't even be you shouldn't even be empathetic about it because she broke up with she you. She broke up with There's you. There's no problem doing that. So what's interesting? What's interesting about women? A lot of times they will be abusive in terms of this is what I feel and this is how I feel, and you got to deal with it. Meantime, meantime. I gotta, I gotta figure out, I, I gotta figure out what's gonna happen when we get back together. You must be out your motherfucking mind. Yeah, I, we're you, not doing this. We're not doing that. We don't have to. So do this, this is a, a really easy one. It, just the ultimatum is: do you want to, do you want to hook up or you don't want to hook up? Do you want to be together or not? Yeah, and and if not, not that's fine. Move if on. If that's too much, for he's you, if young. You, if you can't get over it. This ain't gonna last anyway. This shit is gonna fine. go to shit because he's young and he's got a shitload of women he's got to go through in the first place. So. Um, yeah. Just, just uh, but, maybe I'm a little bit angry about the, the question. No, no. It's just the audacity of, of her us. to ask that. But the, yeah. it's a very simple answer: is look, if you can't get past this, then we don't have to do this. Exactly. Exactly. And that's it. Yeah. But I feel it doesn't matter if you can't get past this. This is what it was. Uh, I didn't do anything illegal. I but, didn't do anything that's even. I wasn't even with you. I wasn't even with you. There's no even explanation. I didn't owe you anything. I don't owe you anything. You broke up with me. Do you want this? Do you want this to move forward or not? Period. If you want to get aggressive, you go, are you DTF or not? (laughs) Down too far. Yay or nay. Yay or nay. So uh, that's it for this segment of Listener Mail. We got some more we will answer shortly. We promise. Thank you so much, everybody, for writing us uh, with these questions, and we appreciate your support over at Patreon. You don't know how much it means to us. It really, it really does keep this show rolling. So, uh, tell a friend, tell a friend. Right? Please, okay. please. Thank y'all, man. I appreciate y'all. Keep supporting. Tell a friend. Peace. We out. Uh, what's up, uh, Where Pimp Brigade? What's going on? Well, this is the Patreon. We're continuing uh, the the conversation with Katie um, and. Um, some of the things that we were talking about, we were getting into a little nitty gritty about, you know, personal uh, value and self esteem, and um, you know, it's it's an, it's an interesting thing because I um I I have you know we we get into these you know we grew up as as kids and then we 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 use the models of how our parents interact and how they interact with us as the model for womanhood manhood relationships and so on and so forth and it becomes repetitive and you were saying that you you kind of had an alternate uh view from a relationship that your father so your father left when you were, when you were like five yeah, yeah did you still have contact with him or no? yeah for the first few months i don't remember what exactly there was the contact i know that she probably tried to stop a lot of the contact mm. but um also what you were saying was interesting because when i was small and my dad had us locked in the bathroom because my mom was trying to get in like uh you know to like hurt him he was smoking a cigarette and he was like i hope you're learning how not to behave oh, and really? I, that wow. repeat now i, I did that. pick up cigarettes but <laughs> <laughs> i had to pick up something but i did and i I've, I've thought about that a lot like in if i'm in a in a situation where i feel like i never raised my voice i've never lost i've never lost a temper <laughs> but if there's something where i'm like okay i hope I am always questioning it. Like, I'm not being like her, or how am I? So, uh, I always have that. I just love the idea that he was in there smoking a cigarette, <laughs> calmly going, 
Because this is what we call a teachable moment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's great. Yeah. He is. And, and I understand why he left as well. Like, I think, um, he, like, he, he could, you know, he had to leave. He probably, like, there was t- 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 times where she was, like, pushing him, being like, hit me and stuff like that. And he never did. But right. I think. She was trying to push him to that. In yeah. First, because it's I, where she was in, in her own head. What she thought her what his response well, it seems like be. he wasn't giving her the he's energy she calm. wanted he's yeah like, i'm very like him in that regard like it, yeah. i won't rise to the occasion and i won't because that's you're actually winning if you don't but it takes a lot of so i think for him that was a good choice to leave because i don't mm. know how much you could take of that and then me not becoming her was she turned on me so i because got, he was gone yeah and i look oh, well, exactly well. like him well, and uh, i'm very well. similar to him so mm-hmm. but i think that was good like right. it's like a lot of fucked up shit that happened but in hindsight it's like i'm glad that i didn't become her because i don't want to be her her life right, is right, like right. i like who i am and yeah do you know what what she's up to at all is yeah she's still she's still in ireland and she was like she tried to get me cancelled off my like okay so when i left when i was 18 she never contacted me her personally yeah. she did all these little things that was very like victimy and um like she arrived at my school crying but didn't actually contact me so never there was never like a let's sit down and talk about this mm-hmm. after i walked out right um, but she did try to get me cancel off my podcast. Um, uh, oh how, my god! How, how that? so? How that? Because she, her, and her sister. Well, her sister sent in a letter, um, but I'm not actually represented by that agency. <laughs> so Wait, like, so you were doing your podcast in Ireland? No, but no. most a lot of our listeners are based in Ireland. Oh, okay, but okay. my co-host is famous, and he, that she emailed his agent. And I was like, well, I'm not actually represented by them, but but so things like that. She likes to like. Stir it, up. stir it up but like has yeah. never been like over the past let's like let's chat about that but that's logical and you can't have a logical conversation, conversation with, with a crazy, crazy person, person. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's not logic can't that's make a, sense out of nonsense you know, it's such a that's such a poignant thing to say that because um you know i get this all the time like i i remember i was counseling this dude who who um his mom uh, so he was i'm mean, trying to remember he was one of four kids right but the mother had uh, four four different ba- no, three different baby fathers right so she had kids with three different dudes and he was the he he was I don't know if he was the youngest or the oldest but in any event his father left and just like leave me the fuck alone yeah. the other two fathers were around and present and he looked so it was, it was interesting because he 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 had this really kind of Barry White kind of smooth velvety voice he was like a really smooth dude but he was like 20 uh 20 something years old still a virgin 26 27 years old still a virgin because she had done so much damage to him um and 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 because he looked like you know like what you were saying he looked like so this was the representation so he attacked her but she he stuck around and he even talked to me about how, you know, during school, like they would prepare for school and she would get her brother two pairs of sneakers and then not give him any. You know what I mean? Just mm-hmm. really nasty, yeah. you know, above board abusive. And, and why again? Um, why did she hate him he, so much? The, his father left and he right. looked. His father, I get the sense his father was like this really smooth dude, like kind of like when you. And and very calm like your dad like you say your dad yeah. was so he was like yeah I'm not yeah I'm not doing this. we're not doing this. No. <laughs> not even like an argument just like, like Sam Jackson yeah, from yeah, Pulp Fiction well, like, hey it, this ain't the first time I had a pistol yeah, yeah, pointed it, in my is, face yeah this is just I'm out of here and uh, and then so you gotta she, abuse somebody if you're an abuser you, you need an abusee you need an abusee yeah. and I always say that the, there's an interesting um, dynamic with people who are abusive is they're abusive so it's like when you're talking about she was trying to get him get your father to to hit her so the 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 situation is in in an abusive relationship there's always the abuser and the abusee the abuser you know, um, if if you if if she's if the abuser is dealing with somebody who is more broken than them yeah they will they will take the submissive position they will be abused yeah. because the, you have the it's almost like you have these two archetypes that need to be filled the abuser and, and they don't care which one they play as long as both archetypes are, are, are fulfilled yeah so when they get 
abusive they get really abusive people they become more submissive and they they absorb the abuse but when they get somebody who's nice and who's kind of sane yeah. they become more abusive yeah. so it's this this push to like what you're talking about hit me hit me you know this kind of thing and 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 what you find more is this kid was so and not even a kid because you know he's a grown ass man but affected by this as a you ain't this and you're not you're not even a man yeah. and you you're not a man they just and you chose to shut down yeah, basically see, and, shut and, the whole and thing. I, rather than risk anything he goes let's just shut down shop yeah and and it was like I had to say to him you, you know it was so he called me up and I I was saying to him like you know you you. I go, she's saying you're not even a man, right? I go, I said, at Look what at the point, source. I, right, exactly. Look I was at, the at source. what point did she ever have a successful relationship? She's never had a successful relationship. So how would she know a good man even if she, because she's so never. So his been, mom is an internet troll, basically. Yeah. That's yeah, really yeah, what it comes yeah, down to. Yeah. Well, that's what they do. You and suck. It's, suck. it's like, you know, no one will ever love you. Or, yeah. Or, yeah, and, that, and that stuff, it does. Did you get that? Out. Yes. Oh, really? Yeah, 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 all the time. Wow. Yeah, you know, but that's it's that's it's like nearly textbook. Do you I want to say that the, I, I I I whenever I feel see something like that because I mean I have shit with my dad and his insecurities and stuff mm -hmm. and 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 kind of emotional abuse because of the ex his insecurities, but it wasn't it wasn't overt like that. And I, I want to always I always try to. Is that why uh, you karate kicked him in the chest? Uh, <laughs> that might have been. Mean, it. <laughs> I just want to know why. That's all. It might have been. I'm not saying uh, it's wrong. I just want to know why. Um, but you, I, I want to say this. That, you know, I, I don't think that this is said enough. When you have somebody who under that abuse, God is so resiliently strong for you to find the way out of that. Yeah. To have that that such overt abuse, and for you to navigate. You know, even at that age. I mean, we're talking about youthfulness. Yeah, but I was, you know, that was different when I was younger. It's like I'm. Yeah, I get it. But I mean, some people yeah. never make it out of that. Some people yeah. stay in the same state that you were in when you were seventeen. Yeah. And they never recover from it for the rest oh, of their absolutely. life, like the guy Dante was talking about. Uh, my, the guy, my, I got a sister. She's seventy-seven years. She lives in the next room. She's absolutely abusive. She's mm -hmm. never gonna not be abusive. She's never not gonna be. I, 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 I my relationship with her is. It, at the I day. still remember you go, hey, that old man you're dating, you better fucking keep him happy. I don't care what. You better suck his dick, lick his balls, his 70-year-old balls, whatever you got to do. Cause such I'm not an abusive. Yeah. She was such an abusive person and selfish and abusive and unaware. And, hmm. and it's She just, might hear you, Dante. I, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> uh, I could care less. She can get the fuck out at any time the chief has a problem with what's something I say because I'm keeping a roof over her head yeah. because she's done nothing to prepare for her old age and so she's literally a burden to me right so i'm i say what the fuck i want to say and if you don't like you can always find some place else to go my but the point being it was just that abuse to, to and we're talking about 70 70 years old it's just yeah. still abusive i have a two-year-old and and even her engagement with me over the it's the minute there's an opportunity for her, over, her, her to overstep her boundaries and be abusive, it it, it it's instantly there. Yeah. You know. Um. So I, I always I, I'm always surprised and and elated to see somebody to be able to navigate that. And mm -hmm. I mean, how old are you now? Thirty. Yeah, and you ain't even you ain't even you still a baby. I'm 55 years old, you know. To yeah. but to kind of have this kind of healthy. Well, it's also well. Firstly, my dad's great and he's been yeah. pretty. But also, it's a I don't want to be yeah like that. I, like I can't wait to find is, out that there actually is something wrong. Like we later find out she's an arsonist, <laughs> and we had no idea. Like, no, I Katie, would, you're I, so great, and then but, she's just but, on the cover it, of the New York Times being arrested. Yeah, but it's all that's also a conversation I've had in my head a million times. Like I've always been like afraid. Like, what if it comes out later? Like, what if I have a kid and it comes out? But like. I don't, you know, my stepmom, my dad says you're self-aware enough yeah. that it's just yeah. the fact that you're asking that question. Yeah, yeah I always say that. Just like yeah. even with parents, anytime parents feel that they got it all figured out, they have no idea what the fuck they're, yeah. they're just fucking up their kids. It's always the parents is like, was was I too much or was I <laughs> not enough? Should I have been? They're usually in the ballpark, and, yeah. and because you're you're aware enough to kind of want to figure it out. It's it's people with the the arrogance of the fact yeah. that I got it. That's always just way the way fucked. Up. Yeah, and it's also just like that choice. Like I, I know that there's mental health sh health issues, but I also think there's a choice as well to either oh, sure. get you know get therapy, get yourself fixed. But it's like 
I saw her have fights with every close friend, lose everybody. I've saw multiple men come in and out of her life, no mm. structure, always sad, always wanted to be a victim, always hurting someone and it's like I don't want that I truly yeah, yeah, believe yeah. we live once I like quiet <laughs> I like, you like peace, the peace and, yeah. I like you know working hard and then it paying off and I like having yeah normality yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah so I'm glad that that kind of then that here's, that's a, here's a question I don't going. know if you ever thought about this. is it do you think do you think that you would have made this the, the the decision for normality in the way that you did if you had not had seen the extreme of what it could be the chaos well i don't know because i you know sometimes you might think or maybe when we're smaller like oh if i had went with my dad when i was five mm -hmm. but i'm glad i didn't like it's shit to be like oh and i have like i used to have like a lot of night terrors and stuff and it's like oh mm -hmm. shit and then i've had shitty relationships and that's shite but i will say i'm glad in one way that I'm really appreciative of things now. Yeah. Like yeah. when the pandemic happened, like yeah. a lot of my friends were really upset and I was like, <laughs> try to live with my mother for 18 yeah. years. This is a fucking breeze. <laughs> and like it's helped with like work, work addict yeah. and, and I have you amazing friends. Yeah. My yeah. friends are, I'm really close with a, like a lot of friendships and I think I've replaced a lot of that lack of love there. Yeah. With like, uh, like surrounded myself at really. With other people that yeah. fill those, fill those, fill and those places up. As soon as I see someone who has like similar you know need for drama or anything i kind of just you, phase you can, them out you it can don't see even it, i'm just you like can <laughs> see it really you can see yes, it early I can see it so and quick. then you just uh, yeah. and you just all of it and then you don't even go i can't do this you just become unavailable oh you yeah i won't even busy. because you can't have a conversation with no, no, it. there's no, no, no point no. it's not my job to teach them i'm just like yeah. i just i go like a like a not a mean ghost but like a, a little like okay yeah. i don't want this in my life so i don't need yeah yeah, uh, yeah. but i've surrounded myself with so, lovely people so. katie you talk uh, on your podcast and stuff you do you talk a lot about sexual stuff which yeah. is which i think is phenomenal it's interesting coming from your background i mean it makes more sense now that i know more about your background but was it difficult at all to be so open about that culturally for you was yeah it, yeah i remember the because so des bishop is he's famous oh, in Ireland. yeah, yeah, yeah he's we know a, des. he we did the podcast for a year and then i continued it on but he asked me to do it, um, mm -hmm. and I was like, I'm not going to miss out on this opportunity, and I got to travel a lot with him, and I was doing his shows and stuff, but the first episode we did, I woke up the next morning feeling like regret, like, just, just like... Just that you were so open sexually about it, uh, yeah. about stuff? Well, and that's the same with sex, too. I yeah. had a lot of one-night stands where I felt shame and guilt, but I just wasn't orgasming, so it's like... I wasn't. Oh, You're like, am I really gonna. guilty? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, now that I orgasm, I'm like, well, that was great. It was <laughs> Once you came, you're with like, a, oh, this is all letdown. worth it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Give when me those balls. Let me lick all of them. <laughs> Bring them over. Well, that's how, that's what it felt. I remember I was like, oh, this feels like having sex where I didn't orgasm. Like that regret and shame yeah. the next day, but just kind of got on with it and yeah. got easier yeah if you don't orgasm you're just getting poked it's yeah, not really yeah, it's, it's not sweaty. really sex it's like an yeah, exercise yeah. where you're not getting <laughs> it's a workout yeah. without a finish yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, when well, you take out all the, the <laughs> you're like come on eight more and you're like nah I'm just yeah. going and home you're like oh he still has socks on <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's not worth yeah. it when you don't come or whatever it's just it's sex if you think about it it's just the physical act is kind of silly and gross when you take out the all the things that you feel inside i'm, I'm yeah. an old dude and i, I would say this that I, i'm not saying i don't enjoy the orgasm but it's not as important as it mm. it it's the the, the it, for me I, and i i get I'm, I'm you know i'm 55 <laughs> years old so the the journey of it the the the, yeah. the connection the intimacy all of those things are really important they, they become more and more important yeah. um to the point where i don't if i don't like if, if if I didn't like you, I just couldn't. Fi I just don't, yeah. you know. And it, I don't, I, I don't want to just, you, you know, jack off on somebody. Yeah. You know, it just, it just. No, that makes sense. I've started doing massage sex, and I really, really like oh, it. Nice. Like yeah. slow build up. But yeah. Oh, nice. But I, we, you said something as well, and I wanted to. Oh, oh totally which part? Slipped my mind before you said about sex, and I was like, oh, that's a good point to make. Well, okay, if you don't come, come, you're back. just getting poked. No, hopefully it'll come back to me. I oh, okay. Like, Oh, back. Yeah, Listen, it, I, I want you to come back. I like good points that I make, so it's really <laughs> important to me, Katie, that you bring this back up. Because, but the I, th I think the and I think a lot of times, uh, great sex is is happens because 
you're not trying to get to the finish line. Yeah, yeah. And then you know, for the woman, you're more relaxed. I think then there's a lot of, maybe more when night stands, there's more chance of it being like a jackhammer. And yeah, if well, you're not, well, I know now I can communicate and yeah, be like, I, this is what I need. But it takes a really long time. Uh, that's, I remember the point. Okay, yes. This works for, right. What was the brilliant this point works I made, for mental health and sex. Okay. Mm-hmm. The podcast helped me because I had to talk. Right. So all of a sudden I had to figure out what these words were, uh-huh. talk about it. Des made me talk about my mom as well. So in two things, it made me learn how to talk about what I wanted in sex because yeah. I started to talk about it and just get comfortable with it. Like when you start a new Forced, job. Yeah. You're like, oh, this is nerve wracking. I'll give you even one better. If you don't do open mics and you don't get on stage, yeah. you don't get comfortable. The so only way you true. get comfortable. Yeah, exactly. So s- with both, you start to get comfortable yeah. talking about it. You start to hear your words out loud. And what you got to do means. it. You got to have sex. Yeah. You can't. No, I always say this. Nobody's good at ping pong that doesn't play ping pong every day. Yeah. You don't go to the Olympics playing ping pong unless and you o- pay. And honestly, ping pong is terrible if I don't come. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just doesn't. It's just a waste of time. And it's it, my, my boyfriend now. He's so great. He's like. So crazy emotionally intelligent and he's like nearly five years younger than me so mm. it's crazy mm. but the day we had sex and I was really frustrated and sometimes you slip into old habits and it's easy and so sure. like you have to and I he was like what is up what's going on and I was like oh we've had this talk I can't do it I can't orgasm when it's fast and I did say this thing that was a little cunty I was like like it's fine if you don't if you don't want me to orgasm and he was like Katie and I was like okay, I'm being a cunt <laughs> and I was like he was like you just have to say what you want because I want yeah, you I'll to enjoy this and yeah, I'll do whatever but I don't read your mind and you only brought that up last week and I'm a man and we forget mm-hmm. and I was like okay you're right I'm sorry and yeah, then yeah. I and then Simple it was fine enough, yeah but it's like it's easy but to kind of do you do you even think that was cunty i almost feel like that was almost like i mean i could like I could, guilt of yeah. the fact that you're talking about the, like almost in a way like you don't think that you you, you know till you get to that point where like, i don't deserve this i want this but it could go either you way don't it, me, you know it could I mean? be insulting because it's were like listen being, if you don't give a fuck about me coming like what when did i, I think say my choice of words were because yeah. i said it, well if you just if you don't if you don't if you just want to orgasm and you don't care like you don't uh, you're not like worried about me orgasming so that does sound cunty and he's a like that's bit. not true Why would I like, okay. yeah. Yeah. but Why he's would I so ever? like he knows that and he could have been a person who would take that if he was Personal, insecure and then personally just fuck everything a big here. fight and but he knows and let's that be I honest, didn't mean it if a, a woman way. admits that she said something cunty it was probably cunty. <laughs> Let's be, they don't just throw that one around. They don't just identify with that unless they did well, something. Well, I'm also from Ireland, so we yeah, call everything cunty. Everything. Yeah, right, right, <laughs> I'm right, right, like, right. oh, these little cunts. Oh, yeah. we knocked it over. Right. <laughs> yeah, she's, okay. also dealing with, uh, she's also dealing with uh, th- this guilt and, and dealing with these things. Sure, you know, yeah. guilt and all of these things. So it's uh, not necessarily, you know what I mean? Yeah, not necessarily. Sure, yeah. more. It's more of like, this is frustration and, and guilt. It's, you know, it, it, it manifests itself in a lot of different ways and it comes out in a d- lot of, di- and it's really, but communication, that's like great. Even, yeah. even though it came out, like it just kind of released in an explosion. Yeah. It's still communication. At least you're having that instead of just, being bitter at him and he has no idea what the <laughs> fuck he's doing. Yeah. And then he's walking yeah. around all happy and I'm yeah. like that fucking happy yeah, face. Like, <laughs> like I throw a cat asshole. alarm. Yeah. Yeah. Little, little cum king. <laughs> yeah. I remember my girl uh, that I was dating, we were having this conversation uh, about, like we were seeing each other and it was like, it was a long distance relationship. So I went there and we only had a couple weeks together, but we were doing so many different things that at the end of the day we were too tired to have sex kind of like by the time... We were done at like, you know, midnight and it's like, all right, this is not the best time for us. We're both exhausted. We both spent the day like having these nice dinners and running around and going to the gym and stuff. And so a couple days would go by where we didn't have sex and we had a conversation about it. Like, are you okay? It's <laughs> like, fuck me. We don't, it's not even, it's like, like I, I had to express it because in my head I'm like, fuck man, again, I, I fucked up and I didn't do it, you know? And so right. I had to have this conversation like, hey, you know, it's all right to schedule it. Let's do it a little bit. Like, let's try to make this work are you comfortable with that because i want to make sure that we're both yeah. satisfied and we're like yeah we're both cool with that yeah. so we figured that out or we figured out like it's okay that we're not like we're not doing it every day yeah you know so we had that conversation to just gauge each other's comfort that's and i great. think that's great you know and it made both of us feel you gotta, i mean you gotta relaxed. have the talk but i i think you know it, it even if you have the talk i think you gotta you gotta revisit it too sure, yeah. because it's 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 a it's it a change. moving yeah. breathing thing what i like now the, i may not yeah. want tomorrow and and kind of having and so true and and i think what makes a, a great lover 
is understanding what those 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 subtle movements are like. It's, it's great to talk, but it's a woman loves a guy where you said is he's he's uh, intellectually sexually intellectual, yeah, and 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 just perceptive of what's going on. It's nice when there's a movement. Uh, you know, something I I say, um, you know, it, even when you're going down on somebody, and I always tell guys, the, the 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 advice I give guys is do something and just do that yeah. because she will adjust her body will adjust to you so it but you got to be perceptive so if it's you know so, I mean you you have to kind of understand some things some women don't listen want, to her body language well, some women don't attention. want direct content to contact on their clit they want over the hood under the hood circles whatever flick whatever slow whatever, whatever it is so you have to but you got to do something first as a baseline yeah. and then you if you watch her hips or her movement um something i i i, I think is it is always kind of work for me to get a girl to orgasm is a lot of times i would lay on her legs like her legs would be open like partially open but i would lay on her legs this way i could i could work nipples and like, yeah. get free hands and then you know, if if it's if it's under the clit, I could take the bridge of my mouth and push back on the mound. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that it's exposed, and you could go under or go. Uh, but and then the, when your mouth over it, it's a you 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 there's a base, so you can you can adjust pressure. But what you'll find women will do is they'll like if if there's not enough pressure or even if there's enough pressure and then when it becomes not enough when it when she starts to rev up, so her buttocks will tighten and she'll raise, push to you. But you gotta you have to see these subtle movements when you're watching these subtle movements. You have to take note of that, yeah. and then to as as so if it's if it's if she's looking for for instance if she wants more pressure as it gets more sensitive or not more sensitive as she gets more into it and she's giving you more pressure you give her more pressure and then pull away before she pulls away it's almost an intuitiveness where if she pulls away if you if she pulls away first it's too much yeah whereas if you pull away it's just not enough which makes her push further yeah. does, does that make sense yeah and then as she's pushing further, pushing further, and then when you're at the top of the roller coaster, tick, 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 <laughs> when you get to the top, well, it's, it's always good to. I find uh, along those lines, it's always good to pull back a little, like especially when you're dealing with the clit or you're using a vibrator or anything like that, where it's on the clit, that continuous motion. Sometimes if you pull away from it and then go back, it gets sensitive again, and it's a nice feeling. Yeah, well, you a, a can also, you can also, you almost have to. Sometimes numb. you have to stop. But I'm not even talking about whatever. What, I'm saying, would you just? Orally, you can you can judge pressure. Oh yeah, yeah. You can judge, it. and if you're paying attention, and you're judging that pressure to get her, you know, and and watching she'll her body. A lot of times, it's not even her body doesn't even know. It. I mean, it's not. It's like cognitively, she doesn't know. It's her body that's feeling and whatever that good feel. She's trying to get more, and as you give more, the minute it becomes too much to back off. You pull back a second, and then she'll push further, and you and you pull back, and you and and so this this you it's literally this dance that you that you're going through that gets that is what makes you skilled in in your ability to pre, to perceive the, these little subtle movements and so on and so forth without um without giving too much or not having you can't be in your own head oh this is the last girl i fucked she like this it, it has nothing to do <laughs> with her although having sex with multiple people in, in multiple situations gives you the the ability to i mean you have more of a of a of a repertoire that you can work from but it's still a thing where you got to still fix figure out that uh you know that that the, the the combination to the to the, the lock pattern, you know, the con yeah twenty seven left 20, and you it's know. different for each girl yeah and I and I and I think you got you but you also have to care enough to pay attention which is what you're saying when you when you're dealing with this kind of uh, the one night stand or the this yeah. or I'm trying to order stuff it's just it's just not there and so the sex gets better when the intimacy is important 
And I, I think a lot of you know, especially if you don't have options. And this is this is the only piece of pussy you got. You know, some guy who doesn't get laid a lot. He's going, ah, he's, uh, I got some pussy, and he <laughs> gets excited. <laughs> you know, <laughs> call up all your friends, throw a parade. You you going live on Instagram? Yeah. Instagram. Yeah. Guess what, everybody? <laughs> so it is what it is. Who's um, got two thumbs and just got laid? This guy. Yeah, it's a, it's a bit much, but the the subtlety, even the breathing, just watching yeah. the diaphragm rise and watching it because that that's too much that is even though that might feel like it's you're aggressively in because ah, she can't have that's not it's it's the it's just enough that it, it may gives the uh that kind of intellectual sex. and the only way you learn that is through practice yeah you know it's, it's a it's a weird thing yeah let's we'll shut this down yeah yeah, we got like a uh, yeah, we got like yeah. a couple minutes here. All right, um, minutes, but uh, can yeah, you plug I, the podcast a little bit again? Tell us about that. Plug. Oh, it's called a shift. Um, just have different guests on, usually around a sex, dating, relationship, nature. What's the um, most surprising thing you've learned from that podcast that you didn't? Whether it's a guest or um, oh, I had this guest on. Her name is Doctor Bachava. You should actually probably get around for this. She's mm-hmm. amazing. We'd love her. Yeah, she It'd be fun to have a doctor instead of these dirtbag comedians every yeah, once in a while yeah. just to shake things up. Well, she sent the, her assistant found me and then they sent me her book and she was trying to promote the book at the time. And I read the whole thing. It was really interesting. But it's yeah. like the four different factors that she says there's four different factors that can stop women from orgasming. And it could be so she has like a point system and it's a circle. And she goes, she says it could be like two of these. It could be two. It could be three of these. And there's like different percentages. Mm-hmm. And so each book explains each point if it's like, you know, uh, what's going on in your life and, you yeah. know, what your head or it. But she said a lot of it could be chemical, like it could be the pill for a certain person that there's a, a, so many multiple things that you could try. That can yeah. stop the orgasm. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah, it was really interesting. There was things as well, like um, she had different stories as well of couples. And so there was a so there was a couple who had just she had just had a baby and the husband really felt like he uh she wasn't attracted to him anymore she never gave him affection i think the baby was maybe like one or two like it was like a while since i had the baby but when the when the woman didn't communicate to him was that she just the kid was hanging out of her and she just didn't want to be touched by anybody else she needed her space until and so then when they had the therapist the therapist was able to give them different situations or there was another one and i thought this was so good for me to learn she said that it's okay to fantasize about other people or other scenarios when you're having sex with your par- current partner because uh, fantasy is a great tool for orgasming. And fantasy doesn't mean you go out and do it. It can be just a fantasy. So, mm-hmm. like, I never want to have... Now, how did you, did you did you have a problem with that? With the, ki- with the kind of guilt that yeah, I was just going to say? So guilty. But now yeah. I'm like, this is great. So, like, if mm-hmm. my boyfriend's going down on me, and I've told him and he's, like, cool about it, obviously. He's like, the man is like, yeah. I don't know. Um, you well, c- as you, long as you, you could come, hit him in the face as yeah. an Irish woman and he's like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> he's just like, fucking chill. And that's what you love about but, it. But uh, <laughs> I know. I've never. I it's interesting because it's it sounds a lot like your dad. I mean, yeah, yeah, I know. Not ain't great. going down on you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> he is like my dad, but uh, but he. So I. Wow, he does. It's his dad. Yeah, it's her married, dad. She, she's dating her dad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, but um, anyway. Um, well, well, <laughs> well, we ruined well, that relationship. No, uh, no next time okay. we see Katie, she's great. gonna be single on Tinder again. No, but no, no. I mean, you. No, gotta, I would you, love you, to you, date someone like my dad. But you have, you, you have, yeah. to, you are dating yeah. someone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the, it's it's the 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 epitome of what you see manhood is your dad. Yeah. Or that male figure in your life. You and know. And I was dating people who were like my mother before, so this is great. But yeah. I so the fantasy thing was so good because for women, I struggled with orgasming because i'd be in my head, head and yeah. it's like losing control and yeah. i would be a little bit like i like being in control i don't do drugs yeah. i like knowing what's going on so the fantasy helps so i would do like rape fantasies i don't want to be raped right, or like um, another guy or like I, I really get off on blowing so i'll be just like if he's going down on me i'll be like imagine another guy there and me blowing him but i'm i don't really want that really in right, real right, life right, right, because yeah. it might ruin the fantasy yeah, yeah. <laughs> But I like that I can go to that if I'm struggling a bit or in my head or I'm thinking, fuck, I need to edit the podcast. Or yeah. <laughs> So I, when she said that, it's helped my sex life so much. And she said her, her, an example she used was there's a couple and the guy is so kind and great and sweet and sensitive. And that's always what she's wanted for a long term partner. But what she's into is like 
Real like shit, angry, rough shit. Yeah, rough. Yeah, yeah. abusive sex, and she, not aggressive sex. Yeah, me. and she one time he so nothing she, wrong with that. Yeah, so the therapist asked her, "Is there ever a situation where he did something like that?" And she said he was like hammering up something in her apartment, mm-hmm. and it was like really hot. And she was like, "You just need to get him to do that in the bedroom, like get into that kind of and just that communicate energy. that to yeah. him." So um so yeah so they were able to like work through that because she was able to be like I need you like this in general life but in the bedroom I need you to be, be right. more yeah. forceful and right so it's all about communication all about but communication. figure out, but it's hard you got to figure out that that's what you want and yeah yeah and you got to also forgive yourself for who you are yeah that's the big thing is yeah. your own personal forgiveness yeah Katie it was so dope having you okay, thank it's you good to be here. Yeah. Thank I want to come and do your podcast too. I would love that I'd, I'd oh love that'd be so it. great. That's cool. Um, Patreon, thanks for listening, y'all. Yeah. I appreciate y'all. Um, tell a friend, tell a friend, tell a friend. You know how we do. Uh, we are out. Let's do Yay. it.